Monday, February 14th, 2022. Armani and Edwards, the bottom line, Woodward Sports Network, Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Hey, <laughs> sexy. Happy Valentine's Day to you as well, man. Uh, exciting weekend, man, but I'd be remiss if not to start the show off with, with my, my baby sister. She's having a baby, and we know the sex. She is having a girl. So. Yes. So I'm excited, extremely excited. It was a very emotional day uh, yesterday before the Super Bowl. And just just excited, man. You know, she's, she's taking her time, done it the right way. Guys, she's with Cam, is an amazing guy. So super happy and proud of my sister. Love you, Jay. Nothing better than having a girl. I remember when my first was born, and, uh, you know, what guy doesn't want to have a boy, right? Yeah. Uh, and then you find out it's a girl. You're like, for a millisecond, yeah. you're like, ah, oh, dang. Best thing that ever happened comes out. in the world. Uh, yeah, best she, thing. She was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> like, I knew it was going to be a girl. Like, I kept saying, and I said, Jade, I just have this energy. I believe it's going to be a girl. I think it's going to be a girl. She was running, walking around the house after she found out with a football in her uh -huh. hand the whole time, just mad and dejected. But she, she's a little tomboy herself, so that's why. Best thing that ever happened to me. And just Madeline, wait. Oh, you got three. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait. But the good thing about having girls is this. Is a yeah, guy, I'm, I'm waiting for this. Is a guy, you know you're always taking care of for the rest of your life. Like, because uh, the girls are always going to take care of daddy, do. right? My you know sisters, I mean? my sisters dote on my dad. Yeah. Oh, man, do they ever. So my daughters will do, they, do, they dote on right. me now. I'm, I'm only busting chops. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade them in for anything in the world. That's I'll tell it. you like this. But now that I know that my baby is having a baby and it's a girl, <laughs> I'm on my way to get a CCW. I ain't, say, I ain't taking no stuff. <laughs> no Don't come doubt. here with that BS. Take that class. Hey, I see, I see your hat on, Braylon Edwards. I mean, that's a little drip. Uh, what a hell of a hell of a game yesterday. Uh, let me just give you a quick uh, update. Dave Burkett, Lions writer for the Detroit Free Press, will be joining us coming up at about 3.30 or so. We will uh, talk to Dave about the Super Bowl and, of course, uh, get you the latest the Lions news because you cannot look at yesterday's Super Bowl without looking towards the Detroit Lions and, and seeing what went wrong during this 12-year tenure of Matt Stafford. But, uh, Braylon, your, let's just get right into it. Your initial thoughts on the game, on Matthew Stafford, are what? Um, so, uh, congratulations to... Rams, they did their thing. My boy Odell proved his worth. Maddie got hurt. I'm glad he's he's better. What I would say about the game is from Stafford. Stafford had some Staffordish moments yesterday, and I don't I don't necessarily mind so much the two interceptions. The one interception is a third down. It's really like a 50-50 ball. It's almost like you, it's a punt, pretty much. So that's not that bad of a situation. You want to give your wide receiver an opportunity, so you try to do that. And then the, the second, what was that? And then the second interception uh, wasn't his fault. It was a drop pass, turns into an interception. I have problems with Sean McVay's play calling from after the first touchdown mm -hmm. all the way into the last drive of the game. There was just times where I didn't understand why certain people were in the game. I didn't understand what he was trying to do. I know that once Odell Beckham got hurt, they did have to go to some they, – they did get jump coverage on Odell. So they pressed him at the – I mean, uh, Cooper Cup. They pressed him at the line of scrimmage, and then they played safety over top. Higby I, got hurt too. I do understand that, but I just – it was something about that game. Like, I really feel like Matt Stafford and some questionable calls that we'll get to and Cooper Cup, they saved Sean McVay's ass in the last drive. Those 15 I, plays. I think you're right about that. I thought McVay called a terrible Awful. game. Him and Zach Taylor. I, I, I did. I thought he called a, called a terrible game. I couldn't understand why they couldn't get the ball to Cooper Cup earlier, especially right. after Odell Beckham. I mean, a reverse, a quick – pass yeah. uh you know right as you snap the ball in a shotgun formation let cup do the rest but that's neither here nor there uh, it would have been a blowout if odell didn't get hurt. i don't think you're wrong about yeah, that i don't blowout. think you're wrong about that when odell went out braylon that changed everything for yeah. the rams offense and then higby went out too maz as, as you said so i mean you lose higby you lose uh o odell you, you couldn't run the football they were double team team and cup and i think like that look this morning, you have to give a ton of credit to number nine, right? I yeah. mean, Matthew Stafford, ladies and gentlemen, say what you want about him. He led three touchdown drives late in the fourth quarter in, the in three playoff yeah. games. Mm -hmm. Three consecutive playoff games. His team was down, and three times in a row, yeah. he led his team 
to a, a touchdown drive or a game-winning drive, essentially. It, it turned out to be a touchdown in this case. Great fourth quarters yeah. for him in all the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. he's. Uh, I want to say he's uh, in the fourth quarter in the playoffs. He's 14 touchdowns, zero interceptions. Uh, to Cooper Cup, 12 for 12 in the fourth quarter, 206 yards. S- three touchdowns in those fourth quarters. It seems like they have gotten it right. You know what it was interesting before we dive into the game mm-hmm. pretty much? I didn't have that feeling yesterday. Like I always had when I'm watching Matthew Stafford, when you're like, at any given moment, Stafford's going to blow it or Stafford's going to do some Stafford-like things. Even with those interceptions, I'm telling you, like I didn't have that feeling. I literally knew the entire game that Stafford was going to win it, even mm-hmm. when they got down, even when Sean McVay was kicking himself and he was the offensive and the calls that he was running, bad calls all the way around. I just still did not have that feeling like they were going to lose. I felt like Matthew Stafford and the team, they were in control the whole time. You know, even when they were, were, were down, I, too, Braylon, never thought that they were going to lose the yeah. game. And it, it, especially when you just go back to the first quarter, okay? The, to, to me, <laughs> this might sound a little ridiculous, but to me, the Cincinnati Bengals lost the Super Bowl with their first possession of the game. Their very first possession of the game, after just, it, it, it was a five and out essentially for the Rams in their first drive couldn't run the football Stafford got sacked one play uh just a slow start for the LA Rams that on was a offense. huge acquisition for the Cincinnati Bengals in offseason uh, Hendrickson yes absolutely and then the Bengals come out fourth and one at midfield and they go for it and I'm thinking to myself, why do you take that chance in the Super Bowl after you just got a sack and they couldn't they couldn't run the but football on you in that opening drive. Why? There's so much game left. The only thing that can happen for you really is bad because if they do stop you, they come down and score. You give them half the field. And that's exactly what happened. It was a fourth and one. They stopped the Cincinnati Bengals. LA came and scored a touchdown on a short field. That, to me, was the difference in the game. All this holding penalty at the end of the game and the offsides and this, that, and the other thing that you can call in the final drive – that decision by Zach Taylor, who I Awful. thought I think is a terrible coach. <laughs> Seriously, I think he is a terrible coach. I, I, he had a he had a, he definitely had a bad game. And he did that a, a lot. Coach. He did yeah. that a lot this year, and that's what happens when you hire play callers to be your head coach. Yeah. You make silly, stupid decisions, and I think he did that a lot this year. Really nice play they're caller in the Super offensive. Bowl. I know they they were in the Super Bowl despite they're a him, minute away, not because of him. They so, were in the Super Bowl despite that head coach, not because of him. I disagree in terms of the fourth down, uh, the fourth of one. Why go for it? It's not the same sim- uh, situation as Michigan and all and all and uh, excuse me in Georgia where they're at the forty. It's not the same right. situation. When you're the Cincinnati Bengals and you're looking at how you played on your first drive, you literally got to the quarterback, you got sacked, you stopped them, five and out, et cetera. Now you get the ball. Now you're on the 50-yard line. What do you want to do? You want to keep possessions going because you want to tire out Aaron Downer. You want to tire out Vaughn Miller. And the way to tire those guys out so that they don't have those high motors is to stay on the field. It's fourth and one. And, I, and counter to your point, it's very early in the game, which means there is a lot of time left, which means you can't come back if you have a, a cluster F or you mess something up or you you boggle it up. You can't come back. You got Joe Mixon, who's a really good running back, runs hard between tackle. He's six foot, he's six foot one, yeah, two, uh, 225 pounds. You just ran the wrong play. Like, you ran the wrong play. You run a lot of uh, counter motion with Jamar Chase. You run him in the backfield and then run him back. You throw those quick passes. Should have ran one of those and handed the ball off to uh, Joe Mixon to the left. That was a good play. I think they needed that fourth and one. It's the Super Bowl, like Matt said. You're at the 50-yard line. It's a momentum builder. It also keeps that uh, that Rams rush defense on the field and also gives you some room to kind of play around if you get it. I, I was in favor of that call. That's his best call of the day. I don't think I don't have a problem with it either. It was too early in the game. And they let's face it, if you ask me, they dominated most of the game. The Bengals did. And in the third Once quarter. Once Odell went out. Yeah, Once yeah, Odell absolutely. went out, that's when they yeah, that's absolutely. when they kind of took over because the Rams had they lost no their, an- they lost the spark. The Rams had no answer for what to do once Odell went out. The kicker is uh, once the Bengals scored on that 14 second play in the second half on the on the Jamar Chase not Jamar Chase on the T Higgins mm-hmm. push down of Jalen Ramsey, Whew. and then they get the the interception. 
and then they go down and they only get a field goal. They had the Rams on the ropes. A mm-hmm. couple of bad play calls by Zach. Uh, and Joe Burrow gets hurt late in the game, I'll guarantee you when they scope his knee, he's probably got an MCL or something going on with that knee, and he still played to the end of that game. But but they did not call good plays towards the end of that game. That that cost them. Two things. One. Um, Should have put him away. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, if you're Zach Taylor, if you're the Cincinnati Bengals, you have legitimately failed. You have failed Joe Burrow. What happened to Joe Burrow year one? ACL tear. Because he has no protection. Now you come back this year. Love Jamar Chase. Jamar mm-hmm. Chase got them there with Joe Burrow. Great connection. One of the best, if not the best, in the NFL. Their line sucks. How many times has Joe Burrow gotten hit just in the last two games? How many times has he been sacked? Well, he's been sacked 16. 17 times. 16 yeah, times. Yeah, 17 nine, through the playoffs. Nine and seven. Every time he dropped back last year, because I was watching, and I'm saying he doesn't shift well in the pocket. That's what I'm thinking at the top. You see, like, Tom Brady is very good at that. Tests back in steps, shape, gets up underneath, gets past the rush, because they rush upfield a lot, so you can slide in there. And then I'm watching, I'm saying, that's not it. He can't slide. There's nowhere to go. He's going to legit injury get really hurt really hurt we will talk about uh what the cincinnati Bengals have to do to get back i think one two and three I'm protecting joe burrow i don't think i don't think they're ever going back boom we'll talk about that also got to get back to matthew stafford and what it means really for the detroit lions organization I, i i have a thought on that and i'm sure you guys do as well i couldn't help but watch last night and not think about the Detroit Lions failures for 12 years. So much to get to. Halftime shows, commercials, we got it all. Uh, Plus Dave Burkett coming up in about, what time is it now? In about an hour and 20 minutes, we'll have Dave Burkett from the Detroit Free Press. Lots to get to, Armani and Edwards. Wolf Force Network, bottom line. It took exploring 50 different formulas and hosting countless taste tests, but we believe Gypsy Vodka is the smoothest vodka on the market. Don't believe us? Ask the owners. We're Mike and Adam Kazanowski with High Five Spirits Distillery. We're in close to about 1,200 locations throughout Michigan. We wanted to create a brand that was geared more towards freedom, love, adventure, and at the end of the day, we really wanted to tell a story that inspired other people to take risks, follow their dreams, whatever that might be. And a miraculous catch! Follow us everywhere. Just search Woodward Sports on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, IG, and more. More, 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 more. Hey, gang. <laughs> I want to tell you about La Stanford Chevrolet located in Dearborn on Michigan Avenue. That's right, La Stanford, your Corvette King. GM announced that all new 2023 Corvette Z06 flat plane V8 capable of 670 horsepower, making it the most powerful, naturally aspirated V8 in production. How about zero to 60? How about 2.6 seconds? Doesn't that sound Jesus good? Christ. Zero to 60 in 2.60. That's right. Zero to 60 in 2.6 seconds. For more, head over to CorvetteKing.com, CorvetteKing.com, or for all your other Chevy or Cadillac needs, LessStanford.com, LessStanford.com, LessStanford. Find new roads. Find them. You better find them. Hey, Absolutely. It's looking like old Dell's got a torn ACL. I mean, you knew that right yeah. away, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean... Whenever you, like I tore my ACL my, my rookie year, whenever you have an injury and you see it, you see the same injury or you, you it could be that, your injury that you had always hurts. Soon as Odell popped his knee, like I, I felt it in my knee. I was like, I was praying that it wasn't, I didn't want to put that energy out there. I didn't want to put that out in the world. So I was hoping it was a meniscus tear or something like that, a little quick, quick and a little easier, six to eight weeks. But that's tough, man. And ACL, because that is a that is a that is an eight month process. I'm watching. He was look how happy he was at the end of that game. Although he's, he's, he wanted to play so bad. It's been a very long road for Odell. Just look at this year. I mean, you you can you can start back with the Giants. You know, kicking the net, getting into it with players. You know, and then uh, Sterling Shepard started doing some of the stuff that Odell was doing. So it made him look like a bad teammate. He was wearing off on guys in the wrong way. They ship him out of New York. 
G-Men fans like Mads hate Odell because Odell didn't represent what it meant to be a teammate. I get that, rightfully so. Goes to Cleveland, and then it's, oh, he's wearing a $2 million watch in pregame, which shouldn't matter to anybody, but but it's Odell, so they care. Things aren't working in paradise. See the cleats yesterday? Oh, drip, drip. <laughs> that's that drip. $200,000. $200, maybe that's why the, the, the foot gave out. Those, uh, those, those shoes, when you make those designs like that, when they're aftermarket re-ups, mm -hmm. Kind of hollow. Not, not a lot of support in those things. It's funny you mentioned the o o OBJ because I was thinking about OBJ and just how, you know, as a young player, you do make mistakes. And that's okay because as a young person, you make mistakes. I try to think if you plopped, you know, upwards of six, eight, ten, twelve million dollars in a 23, 24, 25 year old Ryan Armani. Right. I'm not even sure I'd be here right now, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? I, I, I really am not. I'm really not sure if I would even be here. So I think... You'd be in front of Nine Mile Tower. That creates... Right. You know, it, it, cre it people do things they probably do it, right. wouldn't do it 32 or 35 when they were 22 and 25. You know, so it, it, and that kind of sets a narrative, a tone for how you view that player the rest of their life. Yeah, agreed. I'm trying to get back on track with that before I lost my train of thought. But to say something to you, the difference in Odell in terms of, you say $12 million or plop some money down on him, Odell has never gotten in trouble off the field. Odell has never let the money get him in trouble where he's doing things out here. Like he's, you know, he's doing things illegal or criminal or sure. doing dumb stuff off the field. He's just a little over too passionate, a little immature on the field. Like that was his biggest deal. So he gets out, they kick him out of cleat. Well, they, they trade him to get him out of New York. Goes to Cleveland. It doesn't work out in Cleveland. Now here we are three years removed from the New York deal. He's washed up. He can't play anymore. It's his fault in Cleveland. He's a bad teammate. He's going through all this. Here comes the trade Here comes the trade deadline. Nothing happens. Nobody moves for him. Nobody tries to offer something for him. Nobody tries to get him off the Cleveland Brown team because they believe that they can make something happen with Odell. So now he's thinking, man, nobody wants me. And I'm washed. And I'm a bad teammate. These are all wave of emotions that he's been going through for like the last got three, four years now. Now he gets to the, uh, the Rams. And now he gets to the Rams slowly but surely. You start to see him play it better. You start to see him find some confidence. You start to see him understand who he was again. Start to play well. The playoffs happens. And now you get to the biggest moment ever that you can get to in the NFL, which is the Super Bowl. And he's playing well. Playing real right. He's, his, uh, his girl's pregnant. Mm -hmm. She's due any time right now. A lot of wave of emotions. And he tears his ACL. That passion that you saw, that is a man that has gone through and has came out on the other side. Couldn't be more proud of him. 60, he had 60-plus 60 yards and a touchdown when he went Two down. Two catches. Uh, let me ask you this, Ray. Go back to Cleveland for a minute. I already know the Giants story. How the hell does that not work? How, how does he not – is he not the number one receiver on that team? The Giants forever? No, the Browns. Oh, the Browns. I got an so, answer. So my, my biggest thing, my, my, my thought is, is Baker, and this is why. One, they had success with Juice Landry, and, that's, and they're boys. Like, that's one thing that they are. They're best friends. They are brothers. It is deeper than LSU. It's deeper. They are brothers. They can coexist together because they've been doing it for a very long time. It's Baker Mayfield. He's a little Napoleon complex type individual. He didn't like the fact that Odell Beckham is bigger than him. Is a bigger name than him. He wants to be the number one quarterback. He wants to be the big man on campus. He wants to be the guy doing Hulu commercials and freaking progressive what commercials. What quarterback would not want that guy? I'm telling you, a Napoleon complex type of individual. Because as soon as Odell didn't play when he was hurt or when he was injured, they had fun. <laughs> like he, was, he was out there. The offense looked as, it, it looked like what uh, Kevin Stefanski wanted to run when Odell wasn't out there. You mean to tell me you can do that with Donovan Peoples-Jones, yeah. but you can't do that with Odell right. Beckham? Well, that, you mean I blame the me, coach a little on this. It's both of them. It, he's de Kevin Stefanski is definitely not off the hook. It, he has a lot to do with the situation that played out with Baker Mayfield. Even the negligence of playing him last year, he and uh, that front office should be you know like held to you know, act accountable for what they were able to do baker didn't like odell that he was bigger than him and that's what it is because i'm telling you that's exactly what it was man you asked the question yeah. how how doesn't it work for odell beckham in cleveland i'll one-up your question i'll raise you i'll raise you uh, whatever how do you take a super bowl winning hall of fame quarterback for 12 years and you can't win one playoff game 
Because the Lions and the Clowns are the so, same. So, so everything that you're thinking about why Odell Beckham Jr. doesn't yeah. work in Cleveland, I'll raise you uh, whatever yeah. and ask you, how can't you win one playoff game, not one, with 12 years of a Hall of Fame Super Bowl winning quarterback? And a Hall of Fame receiver and a soon-to-be Hall of Fame defensive end on the same team in the same playoff game. Calvin Johnson and Dominican Sue, Matthew Stafford, and you don't win. That's that's a sin. Th- that is. I was thinking about it all night last night. How have the Detroit Lions screwed this thing up so <laughs> Holy bad? Holy crow! And because they really have. They they took this quarterback and ruined him, and they it, it, and ruined the franchise. Now I know that Brad Holmes is not in charge of that. Mm-hmm. I know Dan Campbell is not responsible for that. And hell, Sheila Ford Hamp is not responsible for that either. I mean, look, um, you know, she wasn't the owner. William Clay Ford was, and and even Martha was. Martha was in control from everything that I hear when she owned the team. So this is their failures yeah. that were not able to get that done. But I'll tell you this much. If this regime cannot get it right, if Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell cannot get it right, Sheila, you have to sell the team. <laughs> Call to Ser- action. You, you have to sell the team. Yes. Because you took, what is the NFL all about? Parody. It, it's about parody and quarterback play. And you either need a, a, a quarterback to be on a rookie deal or you need a Hall of Famer to win a Super Bowl. You had that for 12 seasons. A Hall of Fame, Super Bowl winning quarterback with your organization for 12 years. You get one shot. If Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell don't get it done, and I do believe, I'm one of the sickos that believe they are going to get it done. I'm with you. I'm one of the sickos that do think they're going to get it done. But if they don't, such a sicko. Sheila Ford Hamp, I'm asking you to sell the team. You get one shot at this. You can't take a quarterback for 12 years, not win one playoff game, let him go somewhere else, win a title. That is not on you. But if Holmes yes. and Campbell can't do it, you got to sell the team. Yeah, but it's, I, period. I, I, I wish. I wish they could Freaking sell the team. Freaking period. But that's Ford we're talking about. That's Sorry. For, that's Ford we're talking about. I get emotional about this They ain't stuff. selling that. They ain't selling that no time soon. One of the biggest sponsors in the NFL. You can still sponsor. <laughs> you can still sponsor. The name could be on your building. But how you have a quarterback win the freaking Super Bowl. One year removed. You had him yeah. for a freaking decade plus, And you couldn't win one playoff game. My wife was sitting next to me watching the game. We had a loaded up couch. But she's sitting next to me the entire game. And at the end of the game... And she loves all the post-game and the pre-game stuff with Matthew and Kelly and their kids. Who doesn't? But she looks at me and is like, remind me, was this his second year there? No, honey, it was his first year. She's like, how how does that look for the Lions? What what, what do you say? I'm like, it's actual hell for Lion fans. That's why I wanted Stafford to go to the Super Bowl, play well, not lose it, but I didn't want him to win. What happened last night is the worst thing that a Lion fan could have pers- asked for. I'm serious, man. It is hell. Officially, it's hell. We got pick number 32. <laughs> yeah. We got the worst pick that was available. We got it. <laughs> and he wins the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him Are you kidding that. me? And oh, by the way. Oh, oh, I got one for you, too, to add to this. Oh, we got to take a break. I got one to add to this for you, man. This, this, is, oh, un- man. But Our, this is unreal. Armani and Edwards. See, this, this is that I real, li- this that real <laughs> Lions fandom that oh, I'm seeing right now. Man. I need some excedrin. This is I'm glad I'm not a fan. I don't I, I don't want to feel like this. I need some Advil. <laughs> Armani and Edwards, Wolf Sports Network, the bottom line. You couldn't make a movie about oh. this.
make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. Comerica Park, sunshine, the crack of the bat. More sunshine, warmth. We're almost there, Detroit. Summer 2022 will be the summer of Woodward Sports. We just got to make it through this damn cold first. Hey, gang, it's Maz for Planet Fitness. <laughs> Planet Fitness is Don't essential. So I've got to start going to Planet Fitness just to get, never mind being fat, just to get rid of my stress. <laughs> I got to go to Planet Fitness. I was there today with Joey and Braylon. Oh, we did go down there. Great today. people. Mary, Brian, yeah. hello to all you guys at Planet Matt's Fitness. Beat me in shuffleboard. It's the home of the judgment free zone. You can work out in a non intimidating, judgment free atmosphere. I tell you a million times, Terry Foster walks around with his two pound <laughs> weights and he doesn't care. Membership $10 a month, black card $22.99, and you get to go in. And do it for free. I just signed up both my daughters. Uh -oh. Lily's already a member. Lily, now Maddie and Abby are members. Join today in club or online, planetfitness.com. Right now, zero down, 10 bucks a month. Planet Fitness, by the way, hiring all positions. Planet Fitness, your essential gym. 10 bucks a month. There Give me a break. Go. There you go. And bagels and pizza. Oh. Ten my bucks. Bucks. My friggin' head hurts, Pick man. 32. Dude, 32. Not, look. My head hurts. Not only that, Braylon, but every Lions failure for the past 12 years on display, baby. was on display yesterday. For, you've got the Stafford thing, okay. Then you got A. Sean Robinson out there freaking getting to the quarterback every play. Yeah. And then not, the second best player in the history of the NFL to play on defense, Aaron Donald. Who should have been a lion? Oh my who wasn't God. a lion? Who's, all Aaron Donald who, who does should have been a Super Bowl MVP. But let's not talk about that. All Aaron Donald does is get to the quarterback, back, and all he ever became was the second best player ever to play defense in this league, only behind one man, and that's Lawrence Taylor. Well, maybe top five. For whatever you want to say. Ray Lewis is up there. Fine. Yeah. Aaron friggin' Donald there. is the best defensive yeah, player in the Ray, NFL for Ray Lewis last. ain't nothing like Aaron Donald. Look. You Aaron, don't think? No, hey, not look, at all. Aaron Seven Donald. Seven straight all-team first Put pros. up his stats, Alex, just for what we're talking three, about. Him. Go ahead. Three defensive player of the year. Like, nah, nobody's ever done with it. Look, look at that. Aaron Donald's the best defensive player of an entire generation, yeah, yeah, you're I right. would say. Yeah, you're right. I if think. you want to be honest, Lawrence Taylor didn't do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, dude, you're right about Lawrence that. Lawrence Taylor didn't do that in three years. No, he did not. Now, don't be hey, all holier than that. Lawrence didn't do that. Back no. off. Hey, look. He, I'm telling the truth. Hey, facts back are fa off. facts. It's are not back off. Facts. Facts hurt. Facts, facts are your me. ass. Lawrence Taylor oh. changed the whole league. <laughs> I know he changed well, the whole league. Okay, but okay. forget about Lawrence Taylor. Years. Let's talk about Aaron Donald for a second and the Lions' failures. Because not only did I have to watch Stafford, I had to watch this guy. Yeah. Yeah. And you're thinking to yourself, holy. You didn't like Eric Ebron? I no. had to explain that to my wife That's as well. Question. Honey, we should have picked him. Instead, we picked this guy named Eric Ebron. Yeah. And I know it's almost pointless to discuss this stuff, Braylon, because mm -hmm. those guys are out of here that made those decisions. Yeah. Everybody that made those decisions is out of here. But you can't help but look at where this team is. Just because don't mean it doesn't stink, though. Exactly. It still stinks. Oh. It's just exhausting. It is exhausting to be a Lions fan. And the good thing about it is, as we're talking out there to you guys, and I hope you guys are enjoying us on this Monday after the Super Bowl, we're not talking about Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. We're not talking about what they will be moving forward. We're just saying, like, once you watch that Super Bowl last night, once you see Matt Stafford, now it reminds you of everything that's happened from the year before last all the way back to the There's no 90s. doubt about it. And we thank everybody watching on YouTube right now. Certainly, uh, man, we can't thank you guys enough. Over the weekend, we crossed over 20,000 subscribers. 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. We cannot thank you guys enough. Uh, my it's, goodness. It's incredible. When you watch Matt Stafford and you watch him with the Rams, like what you saw this season, you saw a coach, a GM, and an organization that wanted to win, that knew they had to make sacrifices to win, that knew that, hey, 
we need this guy. So we're going to trade and do what the hell we have to do to get this guy because we believe he's the cornerstone. Uh, well, Aaron Downs is the cornerstone, but he's the key piece. He's the missing in, uh, ingredient. Oh, as the season goes on, you know what? How about if we got Vaughn Miller and put him over there too? I think Vaughn and Aaron Donald next to each other. Will that look good. You know what? Get him too. Get him too. Oh, Odell didn't go anywhere. I think Odell still has some juice left. We can put him as a third wide receiver. We got Higby who's getting off too. That would be a good one. They put pieces around Matt Stafford, even as he's only been here for a year. Even as he's only been here for a year, they put pieces around. They showed you, they being the Rams, they showed you what you do when you want to win a championship. They show you what you do when you want to. If you say a guy is your guy, if you're going to draft this guy in 2009 out of Georgia and you say this is the future, then act like it. Act like it. Draft, line, draft lineman, protect him, give him a running game. Because when you win the Super Bowl with the exception of last night, you got to have a running mm -hmm. game. Last night's first time I seen him win without a running game. Yeah. You got to have a running game. Never gave him a running game. We had one 1,000 yard rusher. Oh, no, two. Carry on Johnson and Reggie Bush stumbled into 1,000 yards one season. You didn't protect him, you didn't put the pieces around him. I give you Calvin, but Calvin was already here. They didn't put. They didn't do it. The Rams did. Somebody's junk is another man's treasure, and Matt Stafford is the Rams' treasure. I, if I would have told you that Matt Stafford threw two interceptions yesterday, and the Ram, the Rams would rush for 1.9 yards per attempt, <laughs> you you figure they would lose the game, right? I mean, uh, Cincinnati. What do you, what are you thinking of? You're the Cincinnati Bengals this morning. You have the lead in the Super Bowl. At the two-minute warning, with and, 126 left. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I'm just saying. Okay, two, got you. Just at the two-minute warning of the Super Bowl in the fourth quarter, you have the lead, and there's no guarantee you ever get back. Braylon, you you don't think they are ever no, getting back? I don't think they're going to get back. And the reason why I say this, now Joe Burrow is really good. He's damn good. That mm. boy is bad. The boy is cool. Uh, Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is to me. I think he's the second best wide receiver right now in the, in the Behind. NFL. Uh, Devontae Adams is okay. still number one. Yeah. Cooper Cup is three. Okay. Uh, with that being said, that offense, like that team, that Cincinnati Bengals team, had no business being in the Super Bowl this mm -hmm. year. Nobody told them that, but they had no business. They're still two years away from being in the Super Bowl. They shouldn't have been there. Literally, they snuck into the playoffs. They have the worst offensive line in the NFL. They almost got Joe Burrow killed the whole season and the year before that. The defense played terrible in the first half of the year, but they did pick up, they did progress, and they did get better towards the end. That team shouldn't have been there. And you only get one crack at this, especially with a team like that. It's going to be very interesting to see what – Moves Zach Taylor makes starting today. I don't think they get back. They got a lot of revamping to do because you're not going to beat Tennessee next year if they get another quarterback. You're not going to beat the Chiefs next year. You're not going to beat the Bills next year. You know that taste that Josh Allen has in his mouth? Don't you think for one second he's losing to Joe Burrow next year? Don't forget the Ravens. And, and, the Ravens, and the Ravens, and, and they get all Don't 90 forget of the their Steelers. players back. If the Steelers get a, a quarterback, look out. They come right, all right back. You went too far with that one. I could have supported that. Like, and, you got, and you got the Patriots. Yeah. Don't sleep on Mac Jones and the Patriots and that Buffalo? defense they had. I did say that with yeah, Josh, you said Allen. Josh Allen. So with that being said. The AFC is stacked. And you got Herbert. What happens if, if the Chargers oh, figure it well, out? What know. happens if uh, the Raiders get, you know yeah. come back strong? You know, that's, it's it's going to be hard stacked. for them to come back. I'm telling no you. Doubt. I mean, they're a ten and seven team too. They're not like some thirteen and four team or, they, or some twelve they and five, five team. They weren't even a wild yeah. card. Whatever is under wild card is what they were. Um, so yeah, I just uh, I, I look at Cincinnati and I don't buy that house money stuff. Once you get to the Super Bowl, you got to win it because of all the things that we just talked yeah. about. There is no guarantee that you ever get back to that Super Bowl. And and Joe Burrow's a really really great player. Everything they, happened for you to have a chance yeah, to win it. They've got to protect him, man. Got to protect him. You got to get some line around him. And also, like, let's just go back to the Super Bowl. Zach Taylor, come on, man. You come on, like. I, it's no excuse for you to use that your offensive line stinks. You knew this in mm. offseason. You didn't do anything about it. You knew it during the year. You didn't do anything about it. You got to play to your strengths, man. You got to help Joe Burr out in that mm. game. You guys are ahead. Like you said, you don't you don't know if you're ever going to get back. Got to help Joe Burr out, man. Make, make things make sense. Give him a couple easy throws. He never was allowed to get into any type of rhythm. Like, they did run the ball pretty good with Joe uh -huh. Mason, but he didn't get in any rhythm at all in that game. Listen, in the Sean McVay, McVay Super Bowls, they didn't score a touchdown in the first one against the Patriots. And in this one, if they didn't score the winning touchdown, he would have only had two touchdowns scored 
in two games. Eight quarters. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, three touchdowns in eight quarters, I don't think is anything to write home about no. either. I mean, no, not and at I, all. I, I do think, you know, Zach Taylor's just terrible decision making. He out sat there on the lead. He sat was, on the lead. Was the reason why McVay yeah. isn't being talked about now yeah. because McVay coached a terrible game. But they the won. McVay coached a terrible game only to be outdone by a worse coaching job than Zach Taylor. 100%. His understanding. Seriously. Yeah. Like, why the hell? Like, yeah, Joe Mixon's balling. 15 carries, 72 yards. He's having a pretty a pretty good game, pretty decent game. They didn't throw him the ball out the backfield. Mm -hmm. But, hell, when you can't throw because you can't uh, block and protect, you can't do well out the backfield. Why the hell on third and one? And fourth and one at the end of the game when they were trying to get one yard. Why the hell was Samaj P. Ryan in the game? Terrible, man. Why that's, the hell was that's the Barry Sanders why, rule. They used to take him out. Like I said, third down, Barry Sanders was out of the game. Yeah. Same same crap. Don't they put you, a pass catching uh running back in that doesn't that shouldn't be there. But that's how their bread and butter was this year. That's you, how they got there. Yeah, but they, but this year they wasn't playing against Aaron Donald. Don't you know that Aaron Donald's taking up? He they could put him anywhere. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that when they bring Samaj P. Ryan in, Aaron Donald's going right next to the three yep. technique. They're gonna they're gonna widen the lines, bring everybody down. You're not getting that yard on Aaron Donald. That's, that's the not only that they didn't put two guys on cuff on the game winning yeah. touchdown. Crazy. Stafford said, I saw one on one. I'm going right to him. Uh, speaking of Aaron Donald, good job, Old State. Matthew Stafford is the first Super Bowl winning quarterback to throw three touchdowns and not get game MVP. So if that's the case, you figure it's going to be Aaron Donald. Should have been Aaron Donald. How, I want to ask Maz about this because you know about all that voting stuff. How does that happen? We'll do that next. Cooper Cup MVP over Aaron Donald. I mean, you I know, don't know. You know how it happens? It happens because, did you see what Snoop did before the halftime show? <laughs> the voters was out there smoking that Cali Bud. That's what it was. We'll be right back. Ermani and Edwards. What was Sports Network? On a Monday! <laughs> After the big dance. Bottom line. Six dark corners. A driveway and a patio. Five windows that could become doors. Every house has unique security challenges. Guardian Alarm has more tech, more team, and more ways to help keep them all safe. Get a professionally designed and installed security and smart home system from Guardian Alarm. Sign up today and get a free video device. Guardian Alarm. Smart. Right from the start. Call 1-800-STAY-OUT. Get a shot up. This is for the win. All of Detroit sports teams live on Woodward. All of Detroit sports coverage lives on Woodward Sports. Driving the best in Detroit sports coverage. SMA has been leveraging relationships as it relates to notables and athletes for over a decade now. Former NFL alumni Sean Jordan has done amazing things with the sports marketing agency as it relates to shining light on the destigmatization of mental health issues as well as uh, abuse issues uh, and disorders. Lomas Brown, Michael Ely, actor, Devin Gardner, myself, just to name a few, we have been on the ground floor working with the Oakland Health County Initiative. We've also been working with the Detroit Wayne Health Initiative, trying to destigmatize and normalize mental health and as well as the abuse disorder situation. Get with us as the Sports Marketing Agency now comes to Woodward Sports, and we are proud to announce that we will be doing the Sports Marketing Agency podcast. This is the F word, and the F word is for fentanyl. If you know anybody that is struggling and could use help, please go to thesportsma.com. That is, once again, thesportsma.com. He was extremely dominating, and he did not win game MVP. I, again, I, I, look, for me, I am not going to lose my mind about this because I'm not an individual award guy, never have been, but I was like, huh? Cooper Cup? I called it out. I said uh, Aaron Donald to my wife. I'm yeah. like, Aaron Donald's got For this. For sure. You can talk about the Cooper Cup thing. I just want I just want to throw something out there. I want to mm. shine a light on it. That's my new phrase right now. Mm. I'm going to shine some light Good. on the situation. After the uh, during the game, after the game, every player interview, everybody that was in attendance that tweeted about it, everybody on the newscasting, all sports analysts, all radio shows, everybody talked about one thing. 
the dominance that is Aaron Donald. Twitter shut it down with Aaron Donald. Social media shut down with Aaron Donald. How in the hell? There's 7.7 .7 billion people in the world. How did 7.7 .7 billion people know that Aaron Donald was the man and was the most dominating force in that game, except the voters? I got no answers. Like I, I don't get it. I, I don't, don't either. I don't. I don't. I don't have any answers for it. Just because. And to be honest with you, I mean, Cooper Cup to me was not Cooper Cup in that game. That was not a Cooper Cup no. game. I mean, he caught two in the fourth quarter. He came alive. He did. I give you that. Yeah. He, you not know, to, not to get not to get MVP though. No. Ninety-one yards and two touchdowns. It was a really nice game, and in the stat line will tell you. Right. Uh, that it was a good game out of Cooper Cup, but I, I couldn't believe last night was as uh, silent of a game for Cup as, as we expected. That last sentence, that last sentence answers your question, uh, Ryan. Mm -hmm. You said, why did Cooper Cup win? How could they pick him over Aaron Donald? They have been promoting this story about Cooper Cup this whole season. The great, the great hope, not the great white hope, just the great hope. No letters, no offers, no stars, has to go to Juco, gets hurt. Nobody knows who he is, has to fight, claw, scratch his way to get into the NFL, to get on a team, to get on the roster, to get a spot. And now here he is having the best season, I think, ever statistically by a wide receiver or anybody for that matter. That's a whole other conversation. Now you want to finish it. And what does it say? It said the fairy tale ending ends with Cooper Cup mm. as Super Bowl MVP. They wanted to tell a story and a fairy tale. That's why they gave it to Cooper Cup. Maz, how does that voting work? I mean, you know all about this back, stuff. Back in the day, at the two-minute warning, the announcers would come on and say, well, the MVP is Lynn Swan today. Terry Bradshaw is today's MVP. They didn't wait to the end of the game. Now, these days, you got to wait to the end of the game, especially the way the overtime goes yeah. and, and all of that. And you could have had three different MVPs depending on how that game mm, ended. True. Because if Joe Burrow goes down, hits Jamar Chase for a touchdown, or hits T. Higgins, Good T. Call. Higgins is the MVP right. of, of the game. So you don't know. So they got to wait it out. But back in the day, it was done at the two-minute warning. We almost had – there was one play that I think almost had Aaron Donald solidified. You wouldn't have been able to stiff him if this play would have happened. On that last play that he made on fourth and one, when he was looked like he was about to get his third mm -hmm. sack – and then Burrow was able to get the ball away. If that's a sack strip fumble, uh -huh. you couldn't have denied yeah, Aaron no. Donald. Three sacks and then ended on a sack strip fumble. He almost but caught that ball. He did. He did. But the oh, fact that it wasn't a sack, it's like they I, – How about this? Just a side note on the betting. Mm -hmm. On the missed extra point by the Rams, the Matt Gay miss, yeah. that's not considered a missed extra point. Do you know people, get that, here. people that bet on it lost because they called it – a missed two-point conversion because of the snap drop. Get wow. out yep. of here. Yep, little side note, but that's oh the way gosh. it goes that in makes the sense, gambling though, world. If you think about it, because yep. the did ball not kick the, the ball. Yeah, it, yeah that makes now, sense. I did, I'd be pissed. I did think about the gambling aspect of it in terms of the MVP the voters. <laughs> MGM? In, in, nah, terms of, in terms of the um, in terms of the MVP as well. Yeah. I, I didn't know what Good did point. Cooper Cup have longer odds or shorter odds? I think than, he had shorter he had odds. Shorter than odds. Than Aaron so, Donald was Aaron Donald was sixteen hundred. Cooper Cup was eight hundred. Dude, yeah. I'm telling you, don't sleep on that. Mm -hmm. Don't sleep on the fact that those casinos didn't have a bunch of people have yeah. money on Aaron good, Donald yeah. winning. Good, good point. A, a bunch My of money. Ass did. I'm telling you guys. If you're 16 to 1 on Aaron Donald and you're a bunch of casinos out there, if there was one player that you were betting to win the yeah. MVP awards with long odds, it's Aaron, Aaron Donald. Donald. What did I say on Friday to yeah. you guys? Do not I agree. I agree. I don't agree with sleep you. on the fact that Aaron Donald did not win the MVP because I'll of be all damn. the money. I didn't even that, thought of that. Everything yeah. happened, I didn't even thought of that. Everything shaped up perfect for Aaron Donald mm -hmm. to win MVP. Odell Beckham gets hurt. Yep. Sean McVay doesn't seem to know what the hell to do. He doesn't seem to know mm -hmm. how to call plays anymore. Aaron Donald he took the game. kept them in the yep. game mm -hmm. from halftime to the last damn drive of the game. He kept them in the game. Just remember when they were down there, third and three in the red zone. Looks like Joe Burrow, they're going in for the kill. Oh, not nope. so fast. Sack, Fourth and one. Goal. Third and one. Like Aaron Donald kept them in the game and dominated. This is a travesty. I'm getting I'm getting hey. more angry hey. as I talk about it. Instead of Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford's families going to Disneyland, it would have been 
Aaron Donald's and uh, Von Miller's family. Uh, they're going. all going. For sure. Stafford, Cup, and Donald all went to Disneyland today. They did? Good. Yeah, the yeah. three of them. But it would have been. It would have been, been already. Yeah. Because it would have been. How about that? Bookend defensive guys on, on the, the same, same team, team to win an MVP in the Super Bowl. But again, how Harry many Carson and LT? How many people with a ticket on Aaron Donald for MVP were walking to that window last night after the game? Hey, insert this guy over here. Yeah. I, I, and I never even thought about that in terms of them mm -hmm. being able to have that control or being able to take a look or a snapshot. Can't pay at all that. that money out. Hell no, you can't. Von Miller had two sacks on the low. Mm -hmm. He had, I think he was plus, he was plus 4,100. And he had two sacks. I mean, two sacks. They could have gave a whole defense line in. Seriously, Aaron Donald. Seven sacks. Two sacks, two tackles for loss, five total tackles, a bunch of quarterback rushes, uh, one pass defense. And can I, I, can I, I tell you the one play? Yeah. Aaron Donald pushing Joe Burrow hard out of bounds. That was clean. I don't, I'm just saying. Yeah. Hey. You could see he wanted that game so yeah. bad. He told his team. Let's go. Did you see that what was the play? Did you see what happened after that? I, I'm 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 gonna give you guys in the NFL uh, a warning. I'm gonna give you a little piece of advice. When playing against the Los Angeles Rams, and you're playing against a guy number 99, I don't care what he does, I don't care what he says, don't give that man a reason to be pissed. Mm -hmm. Because after he pushes Cooper, uh, uh, Matt Stafford out of not Matt Stafford, Joe, Joe Burrow. Burrow out of bounds, which is a, it was a legal hit. They come over there, and he had two guys punch him in, his, in the mouth. They had one guy punch him up under the uh, face mask. Another guy gave him a little ear shuffle. Oh, man, he got so pissed. And after that, that was when he got the third down and yep. one sack. That's when he got the third down and one sack. And then on the next one, fourth down and one, he got the sack. Don't piss him off. He's already the best. Don't piss him off. Hey, good news for the Lions. Who was the one guy to stand up to Aaron Donald and push his ass right Pene back? Su. Pene Su. Yep. I tell you, man, those Samoans mm -hmm. and Tungans, they are cut a little bit different. Yep. Guys, uh, amazing numbers right now on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. If you have not hit that like hit button it. yet, please smash that like button. It helps us get our content out. YouTube helps us push the content out. The more likes we have, the better it is. The more subscribers we have, the better it is. Crossed over 20,000 subscribers over the weekend. Uh, and we're trying to get over 200 likes today on today's show during the live broadcast so i want to go over 200 during the live broadcast if you have not hit that like button please do so braylon you mentioned I had a question too for you okay i want you to ask me that question but i also okay. wanted to get your take on the officiating you mentioned the scrum yesterday with aaron donald a lot of talk about the officials i'm going to bring up a couple of points to I you that you i want County you to Bud respond to um armani and edwards man oh man California love. Bottom line, baby. Life is full of hard choices. We're here to make one of life's biggest decisions as simple as possible. My name is Christina Gennari, and for over 20 years, I've helped hundreds of families buy and sell homes. We cover all of Metro Detroit and more, from large luxury homes to starter homes. We will work hard to make sure that you get the home of your dreams. So if you're in the market today or even thinking about buying or selling in the future, make the obvious choice. Christina Gennari, the obvious choice in real estate. Visit us at soldchristina.com today. What's the over-under? Should I tease? Who is the lock of the night? Make sure you're watching Woodward Bets to get the latest in sports betting and more. Woodward Bets, daily on Woodward Sports. Hey, gang, first a shout-out to Christina Gennari. She was a little ill this weekend in Vegas trying to root on the Rams and Matthew Stafford. Hope you're feeling better, Christina. Thank you for your support. Also, thanks to the Foling Warehouse and Hamtramck, Chris, and Noni love Hutt. It. We love you guys, and you guys will love the game of Foling, throwing a football at bowling pins. Check it out. Lots of ways you can go. You can take your friend, go by yourself, make it a corporate event, team-building event, two ways to play. You can go unlimited open play. Just go right at the beginning of the day and stay to the end. Or you could do it on a two-hour basis on a private lane reservation. Cost you 120 bucks. Ten people can share the lane. Also, they have got a loaded bar, over 100 beers, the $2 mystery beer machine, and multiple full bars. Bring your own food in, have it delivered, have a picnic there. Do whatever the heck you want. The place is gigantic. It's the Foling Warehouse in Hamtramck. Make sure you tell them. Woodward Sports sent you. Come get your foal on at thefoalingwarehouse.com. 
So much talk about the officiating, and yes, the Lions are expected to hang a banner at Ford Field if you're watching on YouTube. Our old quarterback won a Super Bowl 2021 2022. Hey, that was a great, great. I can't wait to see that banner. Yeah, that's a is, great is this meme. a real thing? <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I, you never know with the Lions. You never know. You never that's that's like another the Lions. Lions first down. That's a banner. <laughs> that's another Lions first down. That's a great meme that was uh, going on around on Twitter yesterday and social media. My goodness. But uh, so much talk. Uh, uh, God help us. Also, regarding the officials, Braylon, terrible game by the officials last night. I believe there were two penalties thrown, two penalties called before the final drive. One was an offsides penalty. The other was that uh, guy running in from the sidelines oh, exactly. after the interception so, with his cell phone and his AirPods, his slides. Uh, what are you doing, guy? So, what, what, what I'm what I'm beginning to as I listen to the refs, as I listen to uh, I think his name is Hargraves, uh, as I just watched what took place last night, I'm, I'm telling you. It was a lot of people smoking weed in uh, California last mm-hmm. night. It had to be. It had to be the bud. Mm-hmm. It had to be lay off the weed. Oh yeah. Like I couldn't <laughs> believe it. Like your job. Listen. First of all, you're lucky you're on the field. You're inactive. Stay your butt over here. If they need you to get out, get something for them, and keep somebody company or whatever. Like inactive people should be seen, not heard. And actually, you shouldn't be seen or heard. Mm-hmm. Sit your butt down. You got the best seat in the house. Just sit down. He might have cost himself like being on that team next year. Sure. You never know. To do something like that, and you can say he's young. You know, he got caught up in the moment. It's the Super Bowl. I'm not trying to hear that. I have never seen a person. <laughs> he was trying to get his Super Bowl moment. He looked like he just ran off the couch. Yeah. Like he, he had slides on. He probably had some <laughs> bugs. Plus, uh, he's got his phone in his. He's got his he's phone had, in his He got pouch. the phone like uh, Ben Simmons in practice. Come on, man. What, what was you, he doing? What do you get your phone in your pocket for hey, anyway? At the how Super about Bowl? all those fans uh, in LA last week? I, I didn't see a lot of masks. Yeah, I thought about that too. Not even the mayor who wouldn't lift the mask mandate <laughs> yeah. had the mask on. It's neither here nor there. How I guess they were eating the whole day. Yeah. How much money do you think was in the, that bill? Last night. Oh man, probably upwards of uh, ten billion dollars. More than that, Stan no, Stan Clark Clark is worth that. that well, was I mean, yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> Either way, guys, talk to me about the Trillion. officials because the the game. I mean, I was in bed by eleven o'clock, cleaned the house, yeah, and uh, cleaned the house up, got the food all uh, back in the fridge and and packed away, and it was eleven o'clock. Can you I know, say something to the other sports? Yeah. Hey, baseball. Hey, Pay basketball. Attention. Hey, college football. Pay attention to what the NFL did. Six so o'clock, six say. o'clock it was, championship it was, game. It was perfect. Um, with the with the officiating, so it's going to be interesting because the way that they do it in the playoffs is it's not just like a, a same crew. Like it's not your crew that you usually work with. So Ooh. that so that's the only reason why they probably will work again. Because if it was just the same crew, like if it was a crew and that's what I did, that crew would never work at Super Bowl again. Because last night was, I don't want to say it was embarrassing. It just seemed very shiftless and lazy. Like they, what were they doing? Were they watching the game? Were they fans? No flags. Tons of stuff was going on behind you. I saw it four times. I saw a count of one, two, three, quattro, where the clock ticked to zero, and there were no delays. That's there ridiculous. was one, but that was the first one, and it was four after that. Can I take that point? Yeah. Maz, you have the perfect solution. How many offsides were there? Uh, dude, Aaron Donald line up off sides. I'm, On the I'm screaming. But I, the, okay, I wouldn't throw a flag at him. He might kill me. But but I'm I'm looking at the play. Yeah. He's off. It's clear as day. He's yeah. lined his, up his off hands in the running backs field. His helmet is over yep. the ball. I don't understand how yeah. you can't call that that penalty. It's a shame. And, and not only that, but but the Jalen Ramsey. Oh my uh, God! You can't, you can't miss that. You, you cannot can't miss, that. miss that. That should be reviewable. It should be, Maz. I, I agree. You're J- absolutely right. Everything should be reviewable. I agree. The stakes are too I agree. high. Jalen Ramsey is one of the most passionate, outspoken, like loud guys. If he has to be in a game, Jalen Rose. I mean, Jaylen, not Jalen Rose. Jalen Ramsey. Too. Well, him, him too. Jalen Ramsey does not mind getting in your face. He doesn't mind talking stuff. Like, if, if he feels like he's been wrong, oh, he'll let the ref have it. The fact that he was so calm when that play happened, mm-hmm. he basically said, if I got to make noise to get that call, I'm, I'm, 
I'm talking to the wrong person. And he didn't say anything. That was embarrassing. I mean, dude literally got his face Turn, mask pulled him to ripped the and pulled away. Maz, I, I, I do want to come back to you about Braylon's point about the zeros on the delay yes. game. You got the perfect solution. I do. That, Count it down for me from five seconds. Five. You got, you got, your, you got your eye on the go. ball, Braylon? Ready? Huh? You got five. your eye on the ball, right? Yeah, I got my four, okay. go three, two, one. Ah, uh, uh, shoot. Flag. Uh, you know who else does that, Maz? Basketball. There you go. The NBA. There you go. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. How about Shot hockey? Clock. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about Shot it. Hockey's clock. got the red light and the freaking horn. Yeah. So I saw Mike Pereira say something about this uh, a couple years ago. You know, Mike's always smooth operating when it comes to lying about yeah, He's, he's full stuff. of shit. Hey, you see how I said lying? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Mark that um, down, guys. Sorry. Edit that. My bad. But, uh, yeah, he's full of that. But he said... The way in which they kind of give them the leeway and grace period for um, clock getting to zero, if it just ticks to zero, like like kind of like that, right as it hits zero, they said they'll give them kind of like a pass. Braylon, they're making a look, thirty-one second right. clock. <laughs> look, do you I mean, give me a break. How, do you know how ridiculous that sounds? Going back to the Lions, go to the Lions going against back the, to the Ravens. Lions in the Ravens game because that was thirty-two it's just, seconds. If you, you know, it's just like a cop letting you can drive you imagine, and Can you imagine if an NBA official said? Yeah, the shot clock was at zero, <laughs> Go but he was about to jump and take a shot. <laughs> also, so, who's, who's this referee that you imitate? That's that's a funny. Yeah, ref. We gotta know, give him a name. He was about. He was. He stopped dribbling. It looked like he wanted it to shoot. It looked like he thought yeah. about shooting. Yeah. Like Maz, I think you hit the nail on the head. You need a <laughs> shot clock like you have in the NBA or a buzzer yeah. or something like that because they got to clean that up. But I mean, the scrum on the sidelines when Aaron Donald's getting punched—no flags. You got to throw at least throw offsetting penalties yeah. against two two, they two didn't guys. Throw anything. They, were like, they didn't nah. throw anything, and then oh, so much talk about that last. I didn't holding even see call. a ref until the end of the game, to be honest. That last hold, holding call against uh, the Bengals, uh, fifty-five linebacker Wilson. down inside the ten might have been garbage, but but again. It's payback. When you, it is payback. You have a guy at the end of uh, that Jalen Ramsey touchdown. I mean, those officials know knew what happened when they they saw the replay too. You can't re replay that. Everything should be reviewable. They don't call that. That's fourth down. Do you know how many stupid sub rules that are in the NFL? Yeah, Look, dumb. Th you have to be like a genius <laughs> Why, to know these things. They need to rewrite the NFL rule book because there's a ton of rules in there that they don't even use and they don't know until moments come up. Remember the whole situation with the Falcons and the Lions mm. uh, three, four years ago? They hadn't seen that play since like 1940. <laughs> then why the hell is it in the rule book? <laughs> Remember they were like scratching their heads. They didn't know what to do when uh, I th we scored, but we didn't score because of whatever it was. You got to go back and look at that rule book and start changing some stuff. I do think the NFL should do one thing next year that they could do almost immediately. Stop rewarding individual referees and, and linesmen and all that. And reward referee teams. Yeah, because I agree. Yeah, I like that. There are these referees work together the entire season. You are one unit. You are one team the entire season. And then for the playoffs, it's supposed to be a reward. And there's this myth, mix and match and hodgepodge of officials. You, you don't know who's looking at what, how this person works, how that person works, what this person needs to see to throw a flag and whatnot. Just have entire teams together throw uh, or uh, referee a that game. Sound, that sounds, to me, that sounds, you know what that sounds like? That sounds like. Smart. It sounds like an all, no, that, that definitely is smart. But the way they do the referee, that sounds like an all-star game. Yeah. Sounds like an all-star game. When you play an all-star game, you don't know the no. other guys on the team. Y'all just out there kind of mm -hmm. shooting the breeze and having fun. There's no co cohesion. There's no chemistry there, mm -hmm. to your point. They, they, they need to stick to regular crews. And If I, you had a regular crew, the T. Higgins call would have got called. Oh, 100%. Yeah. It got and called. that Wilson call wouldn't have got called. And a couple right. of those offsides would have got You're called. Right. Aaron Donald literally, his butt was on the other side. Yeah. And then again, How did the Bengals not run on the <laughs> field and, and say, hey, hey, hey? Right. I, you, you they were just happy to be there. <laughs> you should be able to review everything. Absolutely. Because the, the face mask on Jalen Ramsey was as blatant a yeah. as just we all saw it. We all watched it. That's got to come from upstairs. Yeah. Who has a better view than the guy in the video booth? There's got to be some Nobody. sort of uh, good of the game rule. For the good of the game, when 100 million people see the face mask, yeah. you should be able to, to review that play. Either. I 
I tell you what, a hundred million people saw yesterday. Mm. They saw one of the best halftime shows I've ever seen in my damn life. And that's where we're going to go next. Uh, halftime show. What'd you think of it? Did la, you da, love da, it? Da, Did you hate it? You know I'm uh, la, the da, da, da. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> uh, we'll get show, to it man. next. Uh, Ermani and Edwards. World Sports Network. The bottom line. Hi, my diamonds. It's Crystal with an X. You want to get hot and perfect like me? Here's my super easy routine. <laughs> Drink at least a gallon of water before you wake up. <laughs> Attach a weight to everything in your house. Hello? Sell your car and just sprint everywhere. Scream when you exhale. <laughs> Don't follow Crystal with an X. Do your own thing at Planet Fitness with tons of equipment and free fitness training in our clean and spacious clubs. Join now for just $10 a month and cancel anytime. Braylon catches TDs. On the slam, there goes Braylon Edwards. Edwards on a foot race, and no one's going to get near him. 80 yards for the touchdown. Ryan catches Pokemon. We all have our strengths. The bottom line on Woodward Sports. Gang. <laughs> hey, gang. I want to tell you about <laughs> okay, Lady Brian Jane's Kelly. The haircuts for men. You get the king's treatment here at Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. It's Monday, so you're probably sitting there and your barber is off today. Probably got his feet up Super Bowl Monday. Man. Nope. We're working here because we're always working. The best ability, availability. Yeah. We are available Seven days a week right here at Lady Jane's. Open 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. All you got to do, walk in, sign in, sit down. Before you know it, you are handsome and clean. Ooh, wee. Ooh, My ooh, goodness, ooh, you need wee. that hot lather neck shave? Hot yep, lather. we got that for you. You want to trim? You trim. just want to look good? Come on in. Got all them products, too. Got Lady, all the products. Lady Jane's, walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. Wicked, wicked, wicked awesome. Um, mentioned the halftime show. Uh oh, uh, you got that drip. <laughs> oh, there it is. Matthew Stafford. A beer, a cigar, and the uh, Lombardi trophy. I think he had a couple subtle shots at Detroit yesterday, too. You think so? I saw a couple waves, a couple looks, a couple things after he got that trophy in his hand. You I saw, don't know I if saw it was him. to Detroit. He was know. very complimentary about the city of Detroit. I think he did it's feel sneaky. the love. It's sneaky. We have that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. It's sneaky. He was uh, like... Yeah, yeah, that was. I think he was waving to his kids down on the field. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. He's his kids, six oh, ten. Oh man, so good. Um, it's good to see though, man. It is good to see. It's this is what see. it's all about. As as an older player, thirty four years old. Uh, That's a great birthday he had, man. Uh, man, hell of a it birthday, is, man. It's good to see also because it's not like he just went out there. And had a Trent Dilfer type season. Mm -hmm. And had a Trent Dilfer type, you know, Super Bowl where he kind of uh, just was on the team. He just happened to be there. I mean, mm -hmm. Trent made a couple of plays, but, you know, he wasn't a stud. Matt Stafford still had to go out there and prove himself. Yeah. Stafford still had to go out there and win 13 games. He still had to go out and beat Tom Brady. He still had to go and win at home. He still had to go 15 plays at the end of that game to win it. He didn't just get... He, well, he just wasn't gifted a ring. He took his ass out there and he worked for it. Three late game-winning drives in three consecutive playoff games oh, in one this other playoff. Person to do that. Eli Matt. I'm just it, – it was an incredible run, and we're so happy. I'm so happy for Matthew Stafford. He did, as you yeah. said, Braylon, go out and earn that trophy. Uh, hour number two of the program, we are going to have Dave Briquette, the Lions beat writer for the Detroit Free Press. He'll be on with us in about 30, 35 minutes from now. We'll get his take on the Super Bowl, Matthew Stafford. The Lions, where they go from here, what it means to the organization. I think so many people here – we're rooting for Matthew Stafford. One, because they were fans of Matthew Stafford and wanted to see him win. But 1A, because the further Stafford went, if he won a Super Bowl title, which he ultimately yeah. did, the worse it makes the Lions organization look, in my opinion. And I think a lot of people wanted to see the Lions organization eat some crow for not understanding what to do with this Super they Bowl winning it. Hall of Fame yeah. caliber quarterback that I, you couldn't even win a playoff game I, with. I also think it was good for the Lions to see. For she, I, I think it was especially good for Sheila Forham to see that. Because mm -hmm. you got a chance to see uh, Matt Stafford, how he was here for 12 years. He mm -hmm. leaves, essentially, your second year on the mm -hmm. job. He leaves, gets a trade, mm -hmm. goes out there and has success. You saw what it looked like 
when you had a guy that you love, that you appreciate, that you put people around, mm -hmm. that you want to have success. So you treat him right. You get him some money. You, got, he, you put him with Andre Went. I mean, Andrew Whitworth. Mm -hmm. You put him in the back. Cam Akers is going to be really good next year, by the way. You put him out there with Odell Beckham. You put him out there with Robert Woods potentially coming back next year and Cooper Cup. It was good for her to see that. So when you're Dan Campbell and you're Brad Holmes and you're telling her, hey, look, uh, we, we need this bread for mm -hmm. this player, et cetera. She can go back and say, oh, you know what? You're right. She took a beating this year. First, the, the, uh, Calvin. the Calvin Johnson, then the Chris Spielman, oh, yeah. and then the Super Bowl. I mean, if you could – she hit the trifecta. Yeah. She got booed out of her own stadium twice. Man, that hurts. And now had her Super Bowl quarterback – Win one for People another People are frustrated, Maz. People are frustrated. You're to tell me. Always yeah. have been, and, and they will be until they get it right. And I maintain, I, I do believe that Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell will get this thing going in the right direction and ultimately will win playoff games, plural. But you got to get it done now, and you got two years. I, I really think you got to be in the playoffs and win a game. Not this year. But next year, just what? my personal expectation. Let me ask you this question, Ryan. We got to get to talk about a little, little Snoop, little yeah, Dr. Yeah, Dre. Yeah, can't wait. But here's the thing. You know, I'm up with the D. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, when you watch the playoffs, mm -hmm. what was the consistent thing with the exception of – I'll even help you. With the exception of one quarterback, what was the consistent thing? These quarterbacks can ball. Yeah. Mahomes, ball. Allen, Ball, mm -hmm. Burrow, Ball, Stanford, Ball, mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers, not so much. All these guys, Ball, that tells you in order to win, you got to have a quarterback that can win. And yeah. as, I'm yes. watching the, as I'm watching yesterday, as I'm watching the playoff, Jared Goff ain't it. Couldn't agree with you. Jared Goff ain't it. Thought about that, too. Like, when I was watching that game, I said, you, you got to get a quarterback. Braylon? You got to get a damn quarterback. You sure he isn't it? Because no, I, I, I promise you. Hey, I'm sure. right. look, man. I promise you, I'm sure. I'm, Sean I'm, not, com I'm Sean not comparing McVay him to the, to the no. top tier. Sean McVay should not have done him like he did him. But Sean McVay obviously was not right. Yeah. I mean, not wrong. So I was watching. I'm saying, you got to have a quarterback that can ball if you want to go far in the playoffs, if you want to have consistency year after year after year after year where people just know we're going to the playoffs. It's just a matter of what round are we going to get beat in or are we going to go all the way. You got to have a quarterback. Oh, by the way, we did have one. I, I want to go back NFL history. I don't think it's ever happened to a team besides the Bengals to hit on your first two number one picks in a row and then make a, make a run like they did. They picked Joe Burrow, and then they picked Jamar Chase, and then all of a sudden they're in a Super Bowl. Can you imagine that happening and to the, the Chase, Lions? That's a hell of a call because the Chase pick wasn't a popular pick. No. It wasn't a popular pick around. Like, their whole building wasn't on the same page. Right. They had to, like Penny. They had to like, keep going back and forth and then agree to disagree and whatever. But they wanted Panay and half wanted – Chase. Right. And they came to the agreement. I don't know how they worked it out. And they took Chase. So to go with your gut, that's some tough stuff. So they stuff, got man. Penn A this year, the Lions. Home run. Who do they get coming up in April? You mean you can't imagine ever having a situation where you draft like Joe Burrow and, and uh, Jamar Chase, kind of like Calvin and Matt Stafford? You, well, you draft Matt, Matt Stafford and, and Dominic and Sue. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, I mean, come on. Uh, I, 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 I take it back just, then. Uh, I, I mean, take it back. Dude, it's just uh, it, we're it's just insane. in another league. But Braylon, I want to go back to before we talk about the halftime show. Just give me give me a couple more minutes take your on time, this. Buddy. Give me a couple more minutes hey, on man, this hey. because take your time. I think this is an important point to make because I it it dawned on me last night about this. As you're watching this dynamic quarterback play, and, and you rattled them off, you know, Mahomes and Allen. Burrow and Allen Stafford. and Stafford. Rodgers. Uh, Rodgers, who didn't have a great game, but he's but Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, and the list goes on and on and on. Tom Brady, the list I goes on and on and on. Um, is Jared Goff going to be the quarterback that competes with those guys? No. I don't think so either. No. I don't think so either. <clears throat> I just... It just, but there's no Joe Burrow in this draft. No, there's not. No, there's not. At no, least we not. don't think so. It's yeah. crazy. And the, we, and the one he might be, Malik. I, he might be. Look, we we yeah. nobody was talking about Justin Herbert. No. Nobody was talking about Justin sure Herbert. Sure they were. They were talking about Tua Tagovailoa and him. Yeah. Him, 
but not to that degree. That's, That's why because he, was, he didn't have a great year that year. Exactly, but he was the third quarterback taken too. He wasn't. Nobody was talking about Patrick Mahomes. They were talking about Mitchell Trubisky yeah. as the star of that draft. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we think we know, but we don't know diddly poo. The funny, okay, I mean it is up to these guys. <laughs> it, Jim Moore. Diddly poo. it is up to these guys, Brad Holmes, who <laughs> did, by the way. Uh, contribute in a major way yeah. to the Super Bowl. He should get a ring as well, uh, if, if yes. Not really, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, um, but again, we don't know diddly who. We just kind of give our opinion. Uh, I didn't think that Patrick Mahomes was going to be th- one of the most dynamic quarterbacks I've ever seen in my life Maybe coming out of the stay, draft. Stay there. Stay there right there with that Patrick Mahomes look. You're absolutely right. Because if you remember... What they said about him, the description of Patrick Mahomes, because keep in mind he was 13 and 19 when he was at Texas Tech. Not, not, Good job, Cliff Kingsbury. No, not, oh, by the way, thank you for that. He should be out of San Fran after this year for sure, for sure. Not Arizona. San Fran, Arizona. Patrick Mahomes, is, this is why he went so late. They say inconsistent, erratic at times, moves, tries to get the home run on every play. When he doesn't get the home run on every, every play, he starts to go into a shell, starts to disappear. Damn if that wasn't him in the AFC Championship when they lost in that, in that, in that uh, second half. That's why he didn't go that way. Like he, All the negatives that were out there is why he slipped down to 12. All the positives is why he won the Super Bowl in year two. But all that negative stuff was out there. That's why he went 12. While we're on the quarterbacks, Maz, how many people when Josh Allen was drafted? Yeah, how many people Wyoming? said? Wyoming? Who the hell yeah. knows? Yeah, Where's this, Wyoming? This Josh <laughs> Allen guy is going to be God's gift to, to quarterback play. By the way, Nobody Carson said that. Wentz, top of the line. Colts are getting rid of him this year, yeah. by the way. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah. I saw that. They're going to trade him or him. cut him or something like yeah. that. Good for them. We'll um, here. But again, so it just goes to show you that we don't know what we're talking about here. Uh, uh, Allen, Mahomes. Uh, yeah. uh, Lamar Jackson will be back next Jackson, year. Lamar uh, Jackson is Russell another Will- guy. Will- I mean, Russ- come Russell on. Back. Like, so I don't know if Malik Willis – is that guy or not? I don't know if Sam Howell is that guy or not, but I hope the Detroit Lions figure out if one of those guys are. And if you got to take yeah. him at two, then you take him at are two. We, I we, don't care. I don't even know if we're going to draft that two. Oh, they're going to try not to. I don't think they're going to draft it. They're going to try not to. Got a long um, time though. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, I do want to get to the halftime show. We teased it. Best halftime show ever, in my opinion. I, I would have had a couple of tweaks. I'll let you know what those are next. Armani and Edwards. Woodward Sports Network, the bottom line. Everything that we've hoped for finally. He's going deep right arrived. side. Oh, that is Edwards out there. He goes up in the air at the goal line. Hey, it's Brad Edwards here wanting to welcome the sports marketing agency to Woodward Sports Network to the family. Glad to have you guys. For the last decade, the sports marketing agency has literally leveraged athletes around issues such as mental health and substance abuse. It's all happening now. Your Detroit alternative to the normal sports blah, blah, blah. It's Woodward Sports. Who wants a tan? I do. I need one desperately. (laughs) Chili Peppers tanning is where you will find the cleanest salons in the D. Spotless sanitized Mm. rooms and trained certified training tanning specialists. Join the Pepper Club. Braylon's a member Who's of the, the Pepper, Pepper Club? Club. You're a member of the Pepper Club. Oh, yeah. It's got all the best deals. They'll beat all the competitors by five bucks. Don't forget Chili Peppers Tanning. Dot com. Hottest bulbs, hottest deals, darkest tans, your vitamin D headquarters. 26 locations and more to come. Chili Peppers Tanning. Big D Energy will be there at the Berkeley Grand Opening. Monday, February 21st. That's next Monday. It's Braylon's birthday. Oh, 11 man. to 1. Woodward Avenue between 11 and and 12 mile chili peppers tanning. Braylon loves it there. Hey man. I do. Oh, welcome back Woodward Sports Network. I love the picture by the way. Yeah, I love, we I love what you're doing. We certainly appreciate everybody watching on YouTube right now. We are about 35 likes away from 200 woo, already. Woo, woo, woo. Let's Hold go. On Monday. Smash that like button if you are watching on YouTube. As I keep mentioning, it just helps us out, helps the network out, pushes right. our content. 
when we have a good interaction like that. Speaking of interaction. Plus, we like you, so like us. Absolutely. A couple of people on the chat talking about Josh Allen. Oh, Josh Allen was high this, high that. Yeah, Everybody loved Josh high. Allen coming out. I, I strongly disagree with that. Even though he was the seventh overall pick taken, uh, Josh Allen was taken behind Baker Mayfield and behind Sam Darnold. So if, if you're some two bums, if you're some great can't miss prospect, you are not taken behind Sam freaking Darnold. Not to mention and Baker Mayfield. Not to mention one of those guys is barely six feet, and the other one's yeah. like, the other one's six two and a half, and not good. Meanwhile, you're this six six specimen. Like Josh Allen is a specimen. So either somebody didn't do their homework, or they got forced into a, oh, we got to draft Baker yeah. Mayfield because he won the high. Somebody didn't do their homework. And again, that's how you stay bad for many many years, for decades. When you're a team Busting like the New York, people? well, when you're the Cleveland Browns or the New York Jets. And you take yeah, Baker Mayfield. Both my teams yeah. I played for. Right. And you take Baker Mayfield over Josh Allen. And Man. then conversely, the Jets, the Jets take uh, Sam Darnold over Josh Allen. Yeah. So if, if everybody knew that Josh Allen was going to be the, the, the best quarterback of that draft, I'm sure he would have still been taken third overall. I'm just saying we don't know. It's up to them to know. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Want to get to this halftime show. Braylon, I'm going to come to you with this because I, too, I'm a 43 year old man. I felt like that halftime show hey, spoke to 43? me. Yes, sir. You know. Spoke to me. I think if you were between the ages of 33 and, or excuse me, 35, 30, 35, and 50, 55, so we'll go 30 to 55. Yeah. That was your halftime show. I think if you were outside of that, Maybe you didn't love it as much as, as I love. I love that halftime show. Two tweaks I would have made. I would have gotten rid of the Mary J. Blige second song. Yeah. And I would have gotten rid of Kendrick Lamar, who was fine, but I just wanted more Dre and Snoop. And I felt like Kendrick Lamar ate that space up a little bit. All right. What I will say is I will add a little addition to that. Uh, my mom, who watches the show religiously, is probably going to kill me. But my mom's in her 60s. Hi, mom. And looks amazing. My dad is in his 60s, and another one of my dads is in his 70s, you know, you know yeah. put his business on. But they loved it for what it was as well. Like, it, it was a show for people that just appreciated mm. good music, mm. good vibe, good energy. You saw the growth and the matriculation, I mean, the maturation you saw from, you know, in that age. They remember when Snoop mm. and Dr. Dre first came out, NWA mm. and all that, and how it took it by storm, and he's just, oh, this, this, this uh, vulgar language mm. and all that, to now they're businessmen, and now they're hanging out, and they're cool. I think I think everybody loved uh, it last night for sure, but definitely our age range. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. And I think there's the, there, 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 there's pe like look, I said this earlier this morning my mom too. Came just dancing, she yeah. was excited. I, I said this this morning too about the age bracket uh, that you know you universally liked it almost if you were in that age bracket. Yeah. And and I've got a, a couple of tweets from a, a bunch of people who really in their 60s were like, I loved it too, so don't exclude yeah. me. And I'm not trying to do that. I'm just you no, know I, 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 I think. I think, uh, yeah. you know, there, there's outliers everywhere. So, but. to your tweaks, I definitely agree with the Mary J. Blige. Now, listen, I love Mary. She's the queen mm -hmm. of hip-hop and R&B. Like, I remember her first album, What's the 411? I remember mm -hmm. Share My World. She's always been amazing. Her triumph for what she's done. She looked amazing last night. First song, I'm doing fine. Nice uh, legs. Fine. Oh, oh yeah. Gorgeous. The legs were nice. The outfit was nice. She came out with so much energy. She was beautiful. It was great. Second song, and then she started doing too much, and she was screaming, and she fell on the floor. I thought she got shot. I didn't know what was going on. It was too much. <laughs> she it had was, a commercial, it too. It, it, she, oh, she was in the commercial. Yeah. So... I definitely agree with you on that. You got to have Kendrick Lamar at the Super Bowl show. One, he's the number one artist, the rap artist in the, in the world and has mm -hmm. been so probably about the last eight mm -hmm. years in terms of winning Grammys, in terms of appeal, in terms of – and he is the West Coast. He is a Dr. Dre artist. So I think they had to have him – to bring in the younger kids, to bring in younger people to pay attention, Great to bring in young people you. to be like, oh, you know what? Dang, Kendrick's going to be there. Right. He has a huge following across the world with young individuals that are watching that Super mm -hmm. Bowl. So I think they made the right call on that just from that standpoint. That's a great point by you. Maz, what did you think? I thought it was very high energy. My mm -hmm. kids were digging it. They kept telling me, make it louder, Dad, make it louder. So the young kids had a great time. Me? I'm more of a Bruno Mars guy. Right. I'm an old guy. I like Michael Jackson's one. I like the Prince. Uh, I like Prince in the yeah. Rain. I mean, Jesus, give me a break on that, right? Yeah. Talk about perfect. 
And uh, I love the uh, a little bit of the Rolling Stones, Super Bowl Forty here in Detroit. Yeah, right. I dug Bruce Springsteen, you know. But you know, that's not it's not for me. The halftime right. ain't for me. I can't wait till halftime's over because Braylon wrote. He tweeted. I forgot there was a game coming I know, up after I did. this. Seriously, meanwhile, I forgot. Yeah. Meanwhile, Evan McPherson is sitting on the sidelines. Oh, that was great. Jamming to yeah. the, the the Bengals kicker we're talking about, sitting out there in full uniform. Just having a great time. I got a great kick out of that. That's a funny. I saw what you did there. I got a great. I got a kick out of that. Evan McPherson's the kicker. <laughs> uh, sh- shut up, Alex. <laughs> um, that's a funny thing. Jay Feely, we had him on early in the mm-hmm. year, and Jay talked about this. And all football players, we look at the kickers. The spe- actually, we look at the specialists. We call them specialists. It's the kickers, uh, the, the long snappers, and the guys that play on special teams. The specialists only have one period during practice. They legitimately practice for 20 minutes, and that's it. They mm. they go over and play ping pong. They go and do all type of other stuff. They don't have to. They don't have to stay out there and watch practice. They literally have 20 minutes of practice, and that's it for them. They can go get a manicure, pedicure. I don't know what the hell the kickers do. When I saw him out there, I was like, he only can get away with that because he's a kicker. <laughs> I mean, what, 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 are you t- what are you telling the kicker in the locker room at halftime? Um, I was like, all right, just uh, maybe make- I'm thinking about doing an onside kick here. Um, Sean yeah. McVay. You know, I mean, Not don't Sean you need McVay. The- Sean Payton I know. pulled that off. But but don't you think you need the kicker for that? Yeah, you do. It, it would have been nice. Speaking it would have been nice if you could But us. they were getting the ball. I know, but still, like, it would have been yeah. nice if you could have joined us. He's being sarcastic. I like it. Speaking of Sean McVay, what do you think of that that that, that trick play? The, the fake, Philly special? The, the I didn't think it was Philly at the special. right time of the game, and I wouldn't yeah. have thrown the ball to Stafford. It was a desperate play. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he he was a, why are you throwing to Stafford? Row. You want to get the guy killed? Right. Yeah, I was actually glad that that ball went over Stafford's yeah. head because uh, he was gonna get lit up. somebody was right there. I want to say uh, guard, somebody guard was right 35. there. He, would, he yeah. would have gotten lit up. Yeah, He would have gotten lit up. Cooper Cup um, might have accidentally saved <laughs> Stafford. Yeah. Um, guys, the halftime show, though, just the last thing about this from me. I could have – you say what you say about Kendrick Lamar, and it makes m- way more sense now because it brings the younger yeah. kids into this. But I could have – and I could have done without Eminem, too. Give me Dre. Give me <laughs> – Where's the penalty flag? Bla- blast, L- blast listen, me. Give me, blast me. Give me Dre. Give me Snoop. Give me 13 minutes and as heaven. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That is hey. West Coast Selfish. L.A. I agree. Uh, that's an L.A. How Super cold? Bowl. Dre and Snoop, the entire 13 minutes, give it to How me. cold was it when they panned down? And you see 50 Cent hanging upside down, just like the video in yeah. the club. I just love the. He looked like a dollar. He looked like. So I was just about to say 75 cents, like dollar 50. So 50 cents. The man. interesting thing about that is how it all got brought together. Like the symbolism behind all that was dope, man. You got Snoop and Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre put Snoop on, got him with his first beat, put it on a deep cover. And Dre put him on and put uh, Snoop on him, and he never looked back. You look at Eminem and Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre risked everything on Eminem. Mm-hmm. His la- his first his second album, his uh, his first album on his label, mm-hmm. Aftermath, trash, awful album. He literally was about to be done. He risked it all on a white boy, in rap at a time white boys mm-hmm. wasn't rapping from Detroit, and oh did he make him mm-hmm. big. And then Eminem, who does he put on? Guy by the name of Curtis Fifty Cent Jackson, dog. I just love all of that together. Like just, yeah. they have all had them together, and they all had an impact on each other's lives. I like that. I was watching it. My mother-in-law was there. She's gonna be eighty years old in April. She knew more about the whole halftime than I did because she watches all the Today Show stuff and everything that leads up to the mm-hmm. Super Bowl. She was ready, and she was like. That's fifty cents, right? You know, you know it was it was very funny to, yeah. to watch it with her. That's and I'll tell you, like, I don't have any right. change. Uh, <laughs> I will, <laughs> I will tell you the only time. And again, I just feel like you, like my age bracket in, in whether it was Meadow Soprano mm. uh, driving in the Chevy uh, the commercial, electric Chevy. the electric Chevy that I've been telling everybody about Dang. for the last find, month, find, find it. the entire month of January. You see we those were, wheels? We were talking about that Chevy oh. EV, it was, that Silverado. We talked, Maz and I talked about this. And that's you're talking about. Yeah. It, it was like they took us. They took us to a place. Yes. I just feel like they I, took us to a place. I'm at an age where like the, the Sopranos, commercials, the halftime yes. show, everybody, the, everything is uh, about my is age it, uh, demo now. You know what I mean? What was the other one? Uh, uh, 
Uh, the Austin Impactor Powers, Evil, yeah. Austin Powers. Yeah. They took, they kind of took us In right. The red set. Yep, they took us right to that like ninety five, yeah. two thousand. They're, they're talking to us because we're yeah. the, we're the demo now. One hundred percent. We're the demo. We got a couple of bucks in our pocket. Yeah. You know we're all, we're you know we want to spend money. They're they're speaking to us. Hey, when we come back, I want to give a shout out to an old friend, a guy I worked with for a long time, and. A guy that called many of Braylon's games. We'll do that Uh-oh. next. The great Frank Beckman uh, passed away over the weekend. Uh, Maz, you knew him very well. Braylon, I'm sure you did yep. as well. We'll talk about it next. Armani and Edwards, Dave Burkett coming up 3.30, 10 minutes from now. Armani and Edwards. Which was that word? The bottom line. You don't have to go to the beach, man. You don't have to get your butt crack full of sand. You just need the little chili peppers, man, to get that glowing beach chili peppers. Man. Monday, February 21st from 11 to 1 p.m. Join Woodward Sports and Big D Energy for the grand opening of the Berkeley Chili Peppers tanning on Woodward between 11 and 12 mile. Come hang and join the Pepper Club. Best deals on unlimited tanning. You just need a little chili peppers, man. Comerica Park, sunshine, the crack of the bat, more sunshine, warmth, we're almost there Detroit. Summer 2022 will be the summer of Woodward sports. We just gotta make it through this damn cold first. Oh uh, man, is that time to talk about Centron Premium Beverages are your lifestyle. This stuff is amazing. I actually had a fun night last night, you know, celebrating my sister, having a, having a girl. It's a girl. And then the Super Bowl, I needed some of this uh, revitalizer this morning to get my day started right in the revitalizer to American Pineapple. Definitely got me going. Water is amazing. Centron is not just premium beverages. Centron just isn't energy drink. Centron is a lifestyle choice. It enhances your brand, makes you feel good, make you want to be on top of your game on your a game but it's here for the memories centron drink it live it centron no snap no pressure though and he booms another one woodson back back grabs this one on his 23 races to his left to the 25 splits two men now to his left at the 40 45 and there he goes charles woodson down the sideline he's gonna go all the way touchdown michigan Frank, Frank Beckman, the great voice of the Great Lakes, WJR. 48 years with one radio station, this guy. And he passes away at the very young age of 72. And he was a giant. I got to work with Frank for a long time on the Michigan broadcast. My first job was at WJR. Came up with these guys. Took, they took me under, my, under their wing. Him, Brand Statter, Dan Dickerson, Steve Courtney, uh, Mitch Album, the rest of the crew, Kenny Brown. So my heart is, is broke for Frank and his family. Frank. 72 years old, man. Just yeah. way too young, Braylon. Frank used to do uh, all the, the, the bus, the Michigan bus. Which oh, is yeah. The, the banquet that we do at the end of the year, uh, you know, by Ryan and Matt. Do the banquet, do the awards, do the honors, and he would always be the MC, always be the guy on the microphone. And just when you see him, you light up, man. Just a cool guy, man. Just good energy, man. And he's been there forever. So he knew my dad like much like everybody else. But he was like one of the ones that treated me like, I, like a, my own man. Like everybody else up there was all oh, little Stan and little Stan. I said, first of all, that ain't my damn name. My name is Braylon, by the way. <laughs> but he was all Frank was always Braylon, man. You're gonna be you're gonna you're gonna be better than your dad. Don't tell him I told you that. Hey, he's broadcast, <laughs> yeah. man. And I might have told the story. I think I did. But on the clock game against Michigan State, uh, we call <sighs> it the clock game. Uh, when Duckett got the touchdown, and I had the ride home from Spartan Stadium with Frank and Jim and Steve Courtney. Uh, and I was driving a WJR van, and uh, they're all sitting in there. They're, they're depressed as hell. I was like, come on, guys. We'll, we'll get it. It's all right. It's one game. And they would basically say, shut up, Maz. I wanted to put the radio on. Shut that damn radio off, Maz. I wanted to put the window down a little, get some fresh air. Shut that damn window, Maz. It was a quiet ride home that night. Uh, I remember it was game six of the World Series that night. I just wanted to get home to see if the Yankees could wrap it up against the, against the uh, Diamondbacks. But... I'll tell you, man, I had some great memories with Frank and those guys. We did the tailgate show together and all those years of Michigan football. And the last day of Tiger Stadium is special to everybody here in Detroit. Yep. And he tells a story as Robert Fick 
is coming One up of the to great bat. Calls of all time. Let me take you back to that. Uh, Frank Beckman on the call here. Last day at Tiger Stadium. Future wearing Norm Cash's number 25. Remember, Al told him he'd hit a home run today. Oh, and he did it! That is! There she goes! And it is on the roof! Oh. Robert Fick, a grand slam that hits the roof and comes back. Kalai called it. Oh! What a moment! Look out for the lumber yard! Oh, Look at those flash bulbs, guys. You don't see that yeah, anymore, you don't have obviously. Anymore. You get cell phones. Isn't that amazing, yeah, man? Yeah. Amazing. Uh, I remember when Frank was calling these games, uh, it was, you know, it was after Ernie Harwell. It was before Ernie Harwell. It was TV. He was back and forth. I went in there. I got a ball, and, uh, you know, him, he signed it for me. This is as I, as I was getting into broadcasting, and who knew, you know, a couple of years after that, I'd be working with the guy at Many good times. He busted my chops a lot. He really did. But uh, it, was, it was all good. You weren't the only one to get yelled at after the infamous Michigan State yeah. clock game. Cheaters. Um, <laughs> we were on the bus, and Chris Perry has a very loud voice. Like It, it, it carries. It travels. I guess mine does, too. But not like Chris. So I'm a freshman. I'm sitting in the front. You know, like where the freshmen sit, the, the, the boring seats, and all the cool guys, the upperclassmen, they're in the back. And they're talking about the game. And, you know, everybody's complaining about the clock. It's the clock this, the clock that, and F that. And they cheated. And Chris was loud. And Chris, you know how, like, when you lose, it's always the same thing. When you first get on the bus, super quiet. Mm. Then you start talking a little bit. You do whisper talk. And then you start talking regular. And then the jokes start. Like, you're like, all right, well, you know, it, it's over now. So Lloyd wasn't having it this particular time he got up and luckily i was in the front so he got up and walked a couple seats past me so i didn't get any other smoke he said chris shut your damn mouth you didn't even play in this game talking about the clock and all you guys victor hobson he went off on the, he hobson. went off wow. on the defense because they were like you know yeah the clock and blah 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 he said we wouldn't have to come down to the damn clock if you weren't on the field jay lou and then he turned back around I said, note to self. Don't say nothing after a loss. <laughs> oh, my. Note to self. Unbelievable, Just rest, man. rest in peace, Frank Beckman. Right. You were a giant and one of the best play-by-play -play guys in the country. Hands Without down. question. Uh, and, and we pray and think about his uh, – pray for his family and think about his family. Uh, no one very, liked the golf more like him. Very tough too. time right now. Hey, uh, we've got Dave Burkett on the line. I'm going to take an early break. We'll get to Dave next. Armani and Edwards. <laughs> what was Sports Network? The bottom line. Hi, I'm Kay Cunningham. I'm proud to partner with Hall Financial, the mortgage company known for five-star service. Don't just take my word for it. Check out their 5,000 five-star reviews for yourself. Go to callhallfirst.com and get started with your five-star experience today. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. Hey, gang, want to tell you about Guardian Alarm. They're your local security experts, have been for over 90 years. You see that black and yellow sign out in front of your house that tells the bad guys one thing. It says, stay out. That's stay right. Stay out of here. Stay out of here. Guardian Alarm has state-of-the-art technology that helps you feel safe. 24-7 local monitoring. Convenient features that let you check in on your home or your business. Control your lights, temperatures, detect smoke or carbon monoxide. Even going to let you lock and unlock your doors. All you have to do is call this number. 1-800-STAY-OUT. That's right. You can Call do it again. 1-800-STAY-OUT. That's right. Guardian Alarm, your local security experts. Let them know where we're sports sent you. If, you do, if you're doing anything for over 90 years, you are damn good. That's what right. You do. No doubt about Although that. The, are the Lions 90 years old? I think they're over 90 years old. Damn it. I, I, just, I just disproved it then. Damn it. I was so close. Uh, guys, let's get right to it. Uh, Dave Burkett, Detroit Free Press Lions writer, kind enough to join us here on Woodward Sports. Dave, how you doing, my friend? Thanks for the time, bud. Hey, Dave. What's up, guys? How are you? Good. What's up, Good. Dave? You look rested today, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we caught we caught was, we, uh, we caught you and exhausted you last time. Man. I was in hey. the middle of a, a big uh, big travel experience last time. I don't even remember where I was. Senior Bowl, <laughs> Mobile, Senior Bowl, City home now. So there you go, Dave. Dave Matthew Stafford, Super Bowl winning quarterback. Just right there. What's that tell you? 
Yeah, I mean, look, you know, give him all the flowers, right? You know, he uh, he deserves it. He he played you know pretty well throughout the the whole stretch run. Um, I mean, you know, he he led the Rams to multiple last second game winning drives, or maybe not last second, but game winning fourth quarter drives. And um, you know, he he so he played a big role in, in everything that went on. The Rams went out and got him for a reason to win the Super Bowl. He delivered, uh, helped that organization win the Super Bowl. So he deserves uh, a whole lot of praise for that. Um, certainly, I know Lions fans are frustrated. You, you let a quarterback capable of winning a Super Bowl um, go, you know, get out the door, and, and you don't win anything with them. It's got to be, uh, it's really got to drive you up a wall. Um, but I think there's there's a couple separate issues there, right? I think the, the Lions have had their own um, issues. I don't think Matthew, as we've talked about before, you know, he's he's still a part of what went on the past 12 years. Winning a Super Bowl in LA doesn't erase that. Um, you know, so this is not, uh, I know some people out there sort of, you know, feel a part of this, like maybe the Lions somehow deserve a, a little share of it, but you know, that there's no way, shape or form that that should be the truth. This no, is the hell Super Bowl. No. This is Stafford Super Bowl. Congratulations to him. Time to move on to the Lions. Hey, David, but how Lion-esque is this, right? I mean, you trade the guy in one year, he's a Super Bowl champ, and not only that, the first round pick that we could have had went from, could have could have been 20, and they tell you, yeah, it's between 20 and 32. And what number do we get? 32. Yeah. We get 32. It's so – my wife is sitting next to me watching the game, and she's like – she forgot. She's like, he's been – this is his second year. Right? I'm like, no, it's his first year. How how does Sheila Fordham feel about – I mean, it's the perfect storm. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, look, you know, it's it, – you're right, Maz. It's, it, I, it's a dagger through Lions fans' hearts, right, because this is a guy that for 12 years, you know, they – told you, you know, that the organization that is told you that, um, you know, this is a guy who can win Super Bowls. Ma I mean, Martin Mayhew, right? If we had 22 Matthew Stafford, we'd, we'd win the Super Bowl. I mean, this is something that they, they believe, but they never went out and, and surrounded him with the complete cast of characters, went all in like like the Rams did. And, um, you know, so the Rams, uh, I, I, maybe the, the aggressive nature with which they, they built yep. around their quarterback and, and the, the way that they built the roster ahead of acquiring that quarterback certainly – um, helped set the stage for Stafford winning. I don't think you know Stafford wasn't going to have this type of success had he stayed in Detroit this year. And and if he if he you know if the Lions would have traded him to Carolina, which you know I I thought they should have done that. I wrote that back in the spring. Uh, you know he wasn't going to lead the Carolina Panthers to a Super Bowl. So I don't I don't know that you know it's not like Matthew Stafford is all of a sudden Tom Brady right. He's, right. he's not winning Super Bowls wherever he goes. Um, but you know the flip side, the Lions he picked thirty two. I mean that's I, I I've always believed. Like I said, I wrote it back in the spring. When you have a chance to acquire a blue chip player, you know, one of those those elite, they were going to get one of the top five non quarterbacks in the draft last year. They traded with the Carolina Panthers. You got to do it because it's great. You need depth, but you really need some of those great players, the Aaron Donald types, you know, the Odell Beckhams, you know, the the Cooper Cups. I mean, those elite players, wherever you find them, you got to have those guys to win big in the NFL. And on the other side, of Von Miller too. So Jalen Ramsey, oh, let's throw him in as well. So hey, it was I mean, a, Ramsey's the best cornerback in the, yeah. the NFL, even though he didn't have a great game yesterday. Donald, the best, probably the best player in the NFL, right? Best nine quarterback in the NFL. So you have some really good players, and that's what you need. And your best chance of getting those guys is when you pick in the top ten. But, so that's why right, I thought the Lions should have taken that deal. And right there too, Dave, Aaron Donald, right in your face. When let's face it, he was the pick over Ebron. We, any dummy would have known that, but. We, we digress. Now, what's the rumor I'm hearing? Tell me if this is true. That Matthew Stafford, when he asked for a trade, said, I will only go to the Rams or I will retire. Is that true? Well, you know, so I don't know. I, I, uh, I was talking with somebody in the Lions organization a week or two ago um, sort of about that. I mean, that was sort of the, the rumor that um, you heard from across the NFL during the spring. Mm -hmm. Jay Glazier said something over the weekend that, you know, Jay Glazier was a part of this whole – you know, Cabo meet up with yep. Sean McVay and, and Matthew Stafford and, and Drew Andrew Brees. And, and yeah, how all that went down. I mean, everyone, right? It seems like the whole NFL was in Cabo. That's where you need <laughs> yeah, to go. Exactly. Anyway. But um, Glazier said that, uh, you know, as Stafford and, and Whitworth were talking about it, that that was the advice that Whitworth gave Matthew Stafford was that, hey, you know, if they won't trade you here, tell them that that's the only place you want to go or, 
um, you know, you'll retire. So, I, I, I mean, the, the trade talks were pretty far along by that point, right? I mean, the, the Lions had, had engaged eight teams or so in conversations, and the Rams were one of them, and Carolina was one of them. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't know that there was ever that ultimatum laid out. I was never able to, to confirm that back in the spring. Um, you know, and, and so did Stafford hint at something? Did he say something? Did the Lions just take his wishes into account? I think it's fair to say the Lions absolutely took his wishes into account. Did they, you know, maybe think the Rams' offer was the best deal anyway? You know, that's what Brad Holmes says. So I take him at his word on it. I think the two offers were comparable, uh, and it's just a matter of, you know, what you want to do and, and how you want to build. And I will say this about Brad Holmes. You know, I wrote this today on Fruit.com is that, um, you know, he's playing the long, long game with this. And, and that's why he wanted, you know, the extra first-round picks because the Lions, as he said, are, you know, that they're the stage of – competing for a championship that they are in right now is nowhere near what the, the Rams were when they acquired Matthew Stafford. So he's trying to do what the Rams did and build up the entire roster. And then you can go out and use your draft capital or trade up or do what you need to do to get that one or two final pieces. And hopefully it's not a quarterback for a team's sake, because that's the most difficult one to get. Man, uh, you better watch out playing that long game on a bad team. Cause you might not get too long to figure it out. Um, yo, let me ask you this question. I'm watching the playoffs this, uh, this year, uh, Dave, and I'm just noticing this consistent thing, this consistent thing, and that is greatness at the quarterback position, whether it's Josh yep. Allen, whether it's Mahomes, whether it's Aaron Rodgers, who didn't have a great playoffs, but we know what he's capable of, um, Tom Brady, and then the two individuals that were on display last night, Matt Stafford and Joe Burrow. I'm just looking, I'm like, is Jared Goff, like, is he, is, is he it? For us, like, it, can he get to that level if they move pieces around? Excuse me, I take a drink of water or something. Can he get to that level? Like, is he I the guy? He, yeah, th that's the question, yeah, Dave. I mean, guy, is yeah. he the guy that's gonna that you can that can keep up in a postseason game with yeah. uh, Stafford, with a Burrow, with yeah. a Mahomes? I, I know it's the other conference, but you understand the question. I I have my doubts about it. I mean, I I think you know uh, most people around the NFL would not put Jared Goff in the same. Uh, category as those other guys and I'm not even sure the Lions would you know I mean you, if you listen to everything that the Lions have said you know yeah he's going to compete for a job and yeah we we believe in him and he's got to prove himself you know there's always a caveat and, and they've never said yeah he's absolutely our guy you know going forward and and so I, I think the Lions are realistic about what they have in the position and, and here's the truth about Jared Goff is he's 26 years old right so he still has some development ahead right he's still there, there's still maybe um, something that that he can get to that he hasn't shown already uh, what he's shown so far, I, I don't think anybody would put him in that category. Now, he did take a team to a Super Bowl. I mean, he was the quarterback of a team that went to a Super Bowl. So, you know, uh, I don't think he's, you, you know, we're, we're not talking about, like, the, the worst starting quarterback in the NFL, here, right? He, he's not in, like, that Pat Mahomes, Josh Allen class. But, but you know, there's, there's something there to work with. Now, for me, uh, Braylon, I'm with you. Like, I think you need that Mahomes type. I think you need that Josh Allen type, you know, Joe Burrow, whatever it is. Aaron Rodgers to have sustainable success in the NFL to compete for championships for years and, uh, upon end. And I don't think the Lions have that right now, um, but I do think um, the Lions are willing to see what they have in Jared one more year to see if maybe he can, if he can grow into that or, or become that or, or stay on the track to be that before they go out and get themselves a new quarterback. Dave, with that being said, I really appreciate that answer. With that being said, what do we do in the meantime? Like, what what can the Lions do this year? The draft class kind of looks like shake. You don't know if Malik Willis is going to be the one. You don't know if Kenny Pickett is going to be the guy. It's like one week there in the top five. Next week there in the second there's round. There's no Burrow. So like, it's no it's no Burrow. There yeah. is no Mahomes. There is no. So what do you do in 2022? Is there a move you make with uh, Marcus Mariota as a backup? I know I'm swinging for the fence right here. I don't know, but what is a right now type move that can help the Detroit Lions? Yeah, well, that's what, you know, I, that's the, the paradox, I guess, that they're in, right? Because I think golf is better than anyone out there that they're going to get. You know, realistically, they're not going to be in the Deshaun Watson, you know, sweepstakes. So, you okay. know, you take a guy like that out of the mix, right? They're, it's not like if the Packers were going to trade Aaron Rodgers or not trading him to the Lions. So, again, you, you, you think about just the realistic options. I think Jared Goff is the guy. And, look, um, I, I just, you know, maybe Malik Willis, you know, Malik Willis is the type of quarterback that his skills at least are the type of quarterback that you can win because of if he reaches his, his talent, not just with, and that's the type of quarterback that you need to win in the NFL. But I don't get the sense that the lions are, are in, you know, will be in on him at number two. You know, it's, it's very early. Who knows 
Uh, we'll have to wait and hear plenty more about that. Maybe that changes. But I think ultimately they will go about building this like the Rams did. And, and it makes sense because Brad Holmes has that L.A. background. And you think about it, right? It, with the Rams, I mean, they drafted Brockers and Aaron Donald and Robert Quinn. They, they just they built this monster of a defensive line, right? The yeah. Lions did that on the offensive line. They had some parts, but they took Sewell last year. They want to have the same thing. Now, in theory, they, they can try to do the same thing on defense. You add an Aiden Hutchinson, per, perhaps with number two. You know, they, they spent a couple draft picks on, on defensive linemen, second and third rounders last year. So, in theory, you're building all these other spots so that a year or two from now, when you feel like you are closer to competing for that Super Bowl, then you can go out and use that extra draft capital or, or spend that money in free agency or or make whatever moves that you can to address those other areas. Now, again, you know, the, the Rams, they did it. They traded up to try to get Jared Goff, right? Then they traded up to get Jalen Ramsey. And then when they realized Goff wasn't the guy, they traded up, you know, they traded for Matthew Stafford. So there's a lot of moves. There's a lot of things that have to go right when you don't have the guy at the quarterback position to be there. But I think you can tread water for a little bit at least while you're trying to get there, especially when you start from the point the Lions started at. Talking to Dave Burkett, Lions writer, Detroit Free Press. Dave, I wanted to ask you, you know, earlier today we were talking about uh, Sheila Ford Hamp, and and this couldn't have been a worse year if if you tried. I mean, boot off the field in the Calvin situation, didn't speak during Chris Spielman's Ring of Honor, then Matthew uh, Matthew Stafford wins a Super Bowl. Uh, you, You win three games. What is this organization's timetable moving forward? I mean, I, I, I said this last time, and I do believe they are one Aaron, Aaron Rodgers decision away from not only competing for a playoff berth, but competing for a division title. But they've got to do it. And, and I mentioned this too. I'm a sicko that believes that, that Brad Holmes sicko. and Dan Campbell <laughs> are the right guys to do this and yeah. are gonna gonna get this thing right. But as an organization, they wa- wake up this morning and think what? Well, they. I mean, F. If they're being <laughs> honest with themselves, they have to think like, man, we missed an opportunity, right? For the last 12 years, we had a quarterback that could take you to the Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl, and those guys are rare in the NFL, and, and they squandered it. I mean, but. You know, that wasn't Sheila Fordham's doing. Obviously, she wasn't, you know, uh, in the driver's seat for all of that. So I think the thing now is that, hey, next time we get ourselves in a position uh, to have a quarterback like that, that we, you know, maybe you understand that you have to go for it, right? You, you can't, you can't. I mean, going all in is not a bad thing, right? Using all these draft picks to take the Rams have been to two Super Bowls now in what three years, four years, right? And and they wow. they they won a couple of division titles. So when you have the chance to go for it, when that window is there, you got to take your shot. I mean, it, it's just you know, be a shooter, right? Shooter, shoot. And uh, I don't think they've had a first round pick since like eighteen. Golf was the last five years. Sixteen, yeah. Because yeah. right. they traded seventeen in the golf trade. They traded eighteen just to move down in the draft. They traded nineteen for. And 20 for Jalen Ramsey and and you know so that, I mean, they goodness. just haven't had one in a long time so you, you take your shot but look again <clears throat> I think the Lions um, they understand where they're at in this rebuild so you know it's it's good to practice patience uh oh do we lose Dave you guys He's talking get... I think you hit the mute button oh Dave I think you hit mute oh, yeah. was, uh, oh, there, there you go, go. There there you go. go. There. Yeah. yeah there it is I, man, I had something to say. I'm with the mute. I had to go into it. That's all right. He lost his train of thought. Maz, you got one before we get Dave out of here? Yeah, Dave, we're going to see you in a couple of weeks. We'll talk to you again because the combine <laughs> is coming up. I can't wait. Okay. Let's go. Let's keep this football season going. Are you guys going down to the combine? No. We, we should. <laughs> We'd love man. to. We should. We probably We'd love could. To. I think I think I, I think I can still run a forty right now. I, I, I got about a seven. Get five. a Brandon Edwards I got about, forty. I got about seven five for you. We'd be love to go. 40. <laughs> oh yeah, no doubt, <laughs> no back. doubt, bro. Um, oh, here's a, so here's a good question, uh, or maybe it's a statement. The Lions have to pay attention. Sheila Forehams talking to her directly right now because, yes, Matt Stafford. They won. They won the Super Bowl. And he did things necessary, three comeback drives in the playoffs. Um, he all season, well, not all season. He had a good season. Let's, let's go there. But that's not a Josh Allen situation, is Matt Stafford. That's not a Patrick Mahomes when he was on as Patrick Mahomes and insert uh, the next great quarterback here. Matt Stafford was a piece around the team, and that's what I want them to pay attention to because Matt Stafford played well. He still had five uh, pick sixes in December. He still did some Matt Stafford-type things of that nature. But when you got Aaron Donald on the other side, 
you can win when you bring in a Vaughn Miller during the season where you're like, I think it's still something left on that tire. I think it's, you know, some tread on that tire. When you go get Odell after nobody seemed to want him, those are how you make moves to win. Like, I want them to pay attention to that because it's not like Matt Stafford went out there and was some quarterback through for 5,000 yards and 50 touchdowns. He went out there and had a really good year, but he had good players around him, and that's what the Rams do. I want her to pay attention to that. Yeah. No, Braylon, I think you're right because, you know, I mean, we've had this debate about Stafford in the Hall of Fame and everything all along, right? I mean, Stafford's a good quarterback. He always has been, but I don't know that he's, you know, in that elite, elite category. Like you said, I mean, he, he led the NFL in, in interceptions this year. So um, it's really a sliding scale when it comes to quarterback play in the NFL. And the better your quarterback is, the, the more room for error you have as an organization and as a team. And so that's why I say, right, you don't have to have Mahomes to win. You don't have to have Tom Brady to win. But when you have that, you're going to win a lot and you're always going to be in the conversation. And as that quarterback gets, you know, down a rung, another rung, another rung, that's when you have to have the, the better supporting cast around them. And so the Rams started by building up that supporting cast because they didn't have the quarterback. Then they went out and tried golf and he didn't work. Then they went out and got Stafford and he worked. And, and I think, you know, because the Lions don't have that quarterback and they're not in position to get one this year at number two, I think they build the exact same way where they're building that supporting cast. They build a strong offensive line, maybe a good defensive line with, you know, whoever they get at number two this year. And then all of a sudden, when you're the rest of your roster is to the point that you think you can compete and you're a player away from a championship, then you, if you haven't by that time, then you, then you maybe have the, the wherewithal to go out and get a quarterback through draft picks or, or, or other you know, assets that you have. Maybe you can become a player in the trade market for a major guy. Should these, uh, the way that the NFL <laughs> has gone where some of these guys have, have, some, have some say in where they want to play, should that continue? The great Dave Burkett, Lions beat writer, Detroit Free Press. We certainly appreciate it, Dave. Combine, free agency, NFL draft, Ooh, football season ain't up. over yet, baby. We got plenty to go. <laughs> well, what do they say? The number one sport in the country is uh, football. The yeah. second most important sport is football offseason, That's right? right? That's, That's what it is. Uh, thanks, Dave. We certainly appreciate it, bud. Thanks for everything. Oh, we got it, guys. Talk to you again. You got it. Okay, Follow man. Dave uh, on Twitter at Dave Burkett. And, of course, read him on Freak.com. Uh, we are going to take a break. Come right back. It's time for Maz's v -v 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 videos of the day. Big Maz. Armani and Edwards. Boom. Boom. Sports Network. Boom. 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 Hit that like button. Hit, Hit that like button. Over 200. Hit it. Fellas, football season is here. It's time to make your grooming experience easy like Sunday morning. Get to Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Walk in, relax, watch your favorite team play, and before you know it, your hair will be game ready. Get to Lady Jane's, open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. You want commercials? The other guys have those. You want great sports takes? Touchdown! What a play! Woodward Sports has those. Detroit's new sports outlet. The Woodward Sports Network. Last night, there was a major game in the NFL. In fact, it's called the Big Dance, the Big Show, a.k.a. the Super Bowl. And guess what I had? I had some gypsy vodka. I had people over. They enjoyed it. We had a little bit of a party, and gypsy was proud sponsor of it. Check this stuff out, man. Gluten-free. Okay, you hear that, Brian? Gluten-free. Oh, Not only is it gluten-free, though, it also... Corn distilled six times using artesian spring water. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds good because it tastes good. Artesian, ooh. Put a little bit, of, put a little grapefruit, my little pear in there. goodness. Stuff is amazing, man. It's very pure. 50 formulas. That's why it's so pure. 50 formulas 50. before they got it. 50. Dang. 50 different combinations. That's a, lot. They, that's a lot. That's a lot of work. That, be, that means they do, they do their due diligence. Yes, they, they do, do. their due diligence. Talk about Adam and Mike. Gypsy vodka. Go down to your local neighborhood liquor store and ask. For Gypsy Vodka. The All-Star Game is coming up this week. That's another time to get you some Gypsy and have a good time. If you're going to drink, drink responsibly. Do that. I agree with Braylon, especially with the All-Star Game. You could bet that on mybookie.ag. And you? if you're a first-time sports gambler, use the promo code WOOD because they'll double your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. That's right. Promo code WOODWARD. Put in 100 get a 200 Put in 500 get yourself $1,000. That's how you can do it, folks. And go to mybookie.ag. If you had the Super Bowl yesterday, the Bengals and the under was the play. I know my man Chad probably had that. Guaranteed he did. Mybookie.ag is the play. NBA, NHL, maybe spring training baseball before you know it. Bet it right there on mybookie.ag. Use the promo code Woodward. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere 
with my book. If you have a gambling problem, please use and call the Michigan Gambling Hotline, 1-800-270-7117. That time of the day, we like to play... Before we do that, Maz, if I could just... Jeez, my goodness, guys. Thank God to every, everybody on the YouTube chat. 225 likes. Woo. Are you kidding me? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Super Monday. Can we get to 250 before Man, the show's why over? Why not? why not? Can we get to 250 before the show's over? Well, if you're watching on YouTube, smash it. Hit that like button. 250. Right. Going Let's once, go. 20,000 subscribers so. on YouTube. Oh, we made what? it. We made it. We made it. We made it. I told you. You, I you told did tell you. me. I you, told you, you. You did tell me. I told you. That'd be the last time you tell me, too. <laughs> <laughs> no. Mas, go for it, man. Hey, uh, to remember our good friend Frank Beckman, let's go back to 2005. Where were you? Were you at the big house for this one? Well, here we go. Penn State's unbeaten season on the line. Michigan trying to upset them and keep its slim title hopes alive. Three receivers wide. Last play of the game from the 10. And he Preston. barks something out. Preston slot right. Manningham wide. Avant to the left. Henny dropping to throw. Looking right. Looking right. Fires toward the end zone. Touchdown! For Mario to start Mario Manningham. Adrian and Steve started. And Michigan will win. 27 <laughs> to oh, 25 man. on the last play of the game. Out of hyperventilating, man. Yeah, and the Nittany right. Lions are stunned. Players have fallen to the Michael Robinson was on that. Listen to this guy call a game, man. It's yeah, effortless. Energy. Thank you to Dr. Sapp Archives, the best in the business for your the Michigan best. highlights. Thank you, and God rest your soul, Frank Beckman. Let's take you to last night. I'll tell you, man, the Rams had a hell of a night. How about this guy? Taylor Rapp is his name. Check him out at the end of the game to last night at the Super Bowl. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. yeah. Proposing to his girlfriend. Oh, and she said, yes. I would have waited and saw what the party was talking about that night. That might have been premature. How about that? That's sweet. <laughs> Taylor Rapp and his little girlfriend. That's corny. <laughs> that was fiance. Hey, Maz, let me, so we were talk, you were talking about the, uh, extra, the extra point, how it's not counted yeah. as a – come to find out, it said one better had a million on the Rams. And because of that play, he lost a mil eight. Oh, mama. Yeah, because he, what, he, he had, had minus yeah, four. He, yeah. Yeah. He had on that uh, on the field goal, whatever it was called. It's not called a missed field goal. It's called a failed two-point conversion. Failed two-point oh, conversion. You bet a million on a missed extra point. Oh, no way. Yes. I know. I, oh, I, I thought it's, it's, it's a sin, man. Wow. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. You got to give him your money back. At least that, right? Yeah. They, mm. But they won't. No. And but they won't. Never saw it before. Got another video for you before we say goodbye. It's NBA All-Star Weekend. So why not take you back to t 1991? I think it's 1920. Who remembers D. Brown and those sneakers S Celtics. Oh. that you could pump up? Remember those pump-up sneakers? Yeah, Dude, of course. I, I remember. Been. Not only that, but I did not grow up rich, okay, at all. My mom bought me. I had to have these shoes. Yeah. They were $100 at the time. Sure. I never had a pair of $100 shoes in my life. She got me those shoes because I had to have these shoes. Unbelievable. That's because you had a 4.0 and you yep, never came out the game. Unbelievable. You, this, earned, it. you yeah, earned it, baby. That was incredible. Here's D. Brown, 1991 NBA All-Star game. Pump it up. Champion at the Orlando Classic coming yep. up in Jacksonville. Well, he said he perfected his, all of his dunks on an eight-foot basket. Oh, he's pumping his shoes up. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Look at that, huh? Right Uh-oh, oh, he's man. getting ready. Here we go. <laughs> he's getting ready. D. Brown. Slam dunk competition. So funny watching these dunk contests Not now. Bad. Like looking at no, that, 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 that was trash. Yeah. All right, Alex, yeah, we're good. That was trash. But hey, but he did have one. He did have an infamous that was one. The, that was that one. That was the blind dunk. You gotta hear Sean yeah. Kemp talk about D. Brown on that blind dunk. When they, they interviewed him, I saw he was like, uh, so what did you think when he did the blind dunk? Did you guys get nervous? He was like, you talking about the one he could see and said it was blind? <laughs> Unbelievable. Every, everybody hates that dunk. I, uh, that was, that a was great. I love that. Seventh, I hope gra the, seventh grade St. Veronica, baby. Got ooh, those pump shoes. Up. I hope the slam dunk yeah, competition is good hoops, this year. Man. Come on, Can't man. Hoop. Make it good. Come on, you NBA guys. Nope. Not going to happen. Start, start playing in this thing. Not going to happen. Yep. Love NBA Saturday night. Used to, at least. 
when they when they created Alex something called making fun of my head movements. <laughs> that was that was the way of the All Star game. That's low right. management, unbelievable. That's all I got, folks. All right, well, good. Uh, hell of a day, gang. And uh, tomorrow we got Stan Edwards in the house. Oh, I, I know that guy. Yeah, you might you may I know, know him. Uh, I know heard of him. Guy. Uh, we'll check out his hit. look six likes away from 250. Are you kidding me? That's what I'm talking about. That is Let's go. what That's I'm Let's talking go. about. Holy crap. World Sports Network, baby. Let's get it going. Thank you, everybody, on this YouTube chat, man. We are growing like crazy. Incredible. 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's an incredible milestone here for the network. And everybody here from the Morning Woodward team to Big D Energy to us at the bottom line, Woodward Bets. Don't forget about those guys. Six o'clock tonight right here on Woodward Sports. They're going to... Beer Man is back in the building. They are. They'll be talking about those Super Bowl bets. I'm sure they'll be talking about that missed extra point uh, play as well. See if they can get aye, anybody... Aye, aye. Uh, in the NBA tonight as well. College hoops as well. And we have crossed over 250 likes Thanks, uh, for our show today. The most likes during a live broadcast oh, uh, that we have had on our show. So thank you guys so much. The we will uh, see you tomorrow. Braylon, get us out of here. I'll see you tomorrow night. It was a great show. Sam, I hear you in the booth doing your thing. Alex, I love all the graphic words that you're doing. Maz, Ryan, Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. 12 years, 13 years ago, you drafted Matt Stafford. He went through his ups and downs. You traded him last year for two first round picks. Jared Goff, he wins the Super Bowl. Be hyped, be excited for him. But after today, okay, just hear me out, Detroit fans. After today, this love affair with the Detroit Rams, knock that you know what off, okay? It's time to focus on Detroit Lions. Matt Stafford is no longer lying. Matt Stafford is on the West Coast. He won him a chip. That's time for us to go get one. Stop cheering for Matt Stafford. Braylon Edwards, bottom line. Boom. Mm. Matt Oram is going up against Nico LaCastro. Nico sits just one under par. Yeah, this three nice. stroke deficit right now to Oram. That's a smashing tee shot. Go in. Oh! Oh! Yes, the skip in ace. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God!